Niama, Wan Juri Kulin, Miran Bikal Bik Wenerup Darabin, Bagangbal Awit Juri, Bagangukal Nangit Bambuth Ba Yellingbu. I acknowledge the Wurundjeri people on whose land Darabin Council stands and pay my respects to Elders past and present. Um, membership of the meeting as tonight is as listed in the agenda, noting that Councillors Newton and Williams are on an approved leave of absence. Um, Councillors, are there any conflicts of interest in relation to the agenda tonight? Uh, yes, Councillor Messina. Through you, Mayor Rennie, I have a conflict for item number number uh, 7.1, which is the urgent business in relation to Agua MAV aged care service. Thank you, Councillor Messina. Um, that brings us to confirmation of the minutes of the council meetings. Um, Councillor Amir and Councillor Le Cerf. Um, thank you. All those in favour? That is carried. We'll admit it when we get to urgent business. Um, before we get to question and submission time, I'd like to make a statement. I wish to welcome senior leaders from the Preston Mosque to the gallery and thank them as our friends and partners for their attendance tonight. On behalf of the Darabin Council and community, I extend our heartfelt sympathy and condolences to the people of New Zealand and to all people of Muslim faith. Like communities around the world, Darabin is shocked and saddened by the horrific in events in Christchurch last week. We send our condolences to all those affected by this tragedy. At the same time, we are heartened by the way in which communities everywhere, including ours, have responded by rejecting hatred and division. Instead, we have joined together in grief and solidarity, recognising that we are of many cultures, many beliefs, but we are one community. On behalf of Council, I have today written to the Mayor of Christchurch, offering our sympathies and support. The Darabin community is diverse and welcoming. We value all people who choose to live, work and study here. Darabin is enriched by the strong and long-standing Muslim culture and heritage in our city. This week, we stand together in support of the Muslim community. It was an honour for the Mayor and councillors to visit the Preston Mosque on the annual Victorian Mosque Open Day this Sunday and share our grief with Darabin's Muslim community. The crowds of people of all backgrounds and ages affirms that there is no place in Darabin for racism and Islamophobia. Now is the time to remember that our diversity enriches us and our community gives us strength. To Muslim people living and working across the Darabin community, know that you are a vital and beloved part of our community. We are enriched by our many faiths. We support each other in this time of grief and we honour those who lost their lives in the Christchurch mosques. We comfort those who are distressed or fearful. We condemn racism and extremism in all its forms. In Australia and in Darabin, we must work harder to create a truly inclusive and welcoming community. We stand together as a community enriched by our diversity. We will continue to work with the Muslim community and with all parts of the Darabin community to strive for inclusion and peace. I now ask that we stand and observe a minute's silence. Thank you.
Before we move to question and submission time, I would like to say to members that um, want to depart now, um, you're very welcome, but you're also very welcome to stay um, for as much of the meeting as you would like to join us for. So that brings us to question and submission time. I'd like to start with the questions that are submitted online, but I do like to remind the gallery that you are required to approach the lectern and clearly state your name. If you cannot approach the lectern, an officer will come to you. I ask that you direct your questions to myself as the mayor and that you limit your questions to two, as this also gives other people an opportunity to participate. Please make your questions brief and to the point. There's no need for lengthy introduction comments to preface your questions. So I have received two questions. Um, prior to the meeting. The first question is from Mr Brian Sanigan, and the question is, why are you threatening members of the Northcote Park Football Club with withdrawal of council services until they have dismantled the poker machines to which they are legally entitled? Are you aware that you may be committing a criminal offence? Um, thank you, Mr Sanigan, for your question. As outlined in the electronic gaming machine policy adopted on the December the 3rd, 2018 Darabin Council meeting, Council is committed to reducing the harm to Darabin residents from poker machines, or EGMs, electronic gaming machines, in our community. This is in recognition of the $225,000 every day, or $80 million per year, that is lost to EGMs across Darabin, causing real and significant harm to our community. Council's policy includes supporting Darabin clubs that wish to divest themselves of EGMs. We support clubs to develop transition plans in order that they may continue to access council facilities and resources and provide a community benefit to their members. Council seeks to look at sustainable and viable alternative revenue sources for clubs, many of whom have been caught in a cycle of dependence on EGMs in order to survive. In relation to the Northcote Park Football Club, Council has been working closely with the club to undertake a transition plan over the four-year period and with the aim of seeing the club divest itself from owning electronic gaming machines. The second question is from Ms Nola Dillon. Is Nola here tonight? Um, Nola doesn't appear to be here, so I will read um, her question. Once again, I'm advising you of the blatant disregard for the one-hour parking signs in Clunes Street, Kingsbury. There is, on a daily basis, a large van and a black Nissan parked directly in front of the above-mentioned sign. These two vehicles are opposite the exit to a car wash business. I was told by Council that the two above-mentioned vehicles have a permit to park in front of the sign. Can't understand why Council would issue a permit for this. The two vehicles belonging to residents from the Ministry of Housing Units, they are located parking space, they are allocated parking spaces. <coughs> I live on the opposite side of the one hour signs. There are seven cars in my family, plus a boat, a trailer and a large work truck. It is a daily struggle to park in front of our house. If our drive is full as the students and people getting the tram park in front all day, when I asked council for resident parking signs, I was told I could pay for a park permit enabling me to park in front of my own home all day. I've been a ratepayer for over 50 years and am disgusted to be treated like this. And if I wanted a parking space in front of my home, I would need to arise very early to beat all the students and other persons who can park all day at no cost. And the majority of people who park there do not live in the area. I would appreciate council do something for the ratepayers. Why can the ratepayers not have resident parking signs? If the traffic controller was up and down Clune Street frequently, Council would get enough revenue for legal parking to pay for the said signs. Think about it. A re reply in the affirmative would be great. Um, thank you for your question, Ms Dillon. Thanks for letting us know. Our officers will inspect and follow through with marking up and issuing infringements if an offence is detected. You can also report these through our customer service centre. We attend all reports and follow through in the same way. Thanks also for raising the question about parking permits and restrictions. We know there is not enough space for everyone to park exactly where they want every time they want to, and this is going to get more challenging as car numbers increase. It's clear we must change something about how we share parking between everyone in Darabin, and we are in the middle of reviewing the parking strategy, which includes looking at how to best manage permits and restrictions. We expect to be able to share a draft parking strategy with the community for feedback in May or June. Our officers will let you know when this is released. In the meantime, we're not intending to make local law changes except where there's a safety need. Thank you. Those are the questions that were submitted beforehand. Are there any questions from members of the audience? Uh, 
My name is Gabriel Quick. I live in the Springthorpe Estate, which has about 950 to 1,000 um, dwellings. Um, last Thursday, there was a group of people who met in relation to parking congestion adjacent to the Latrobe University boundary. Now, this problem has existed since August of 2016, when the council met with representatives of our community, as well as with Latrobe University, to deal with the matter. It is now 31 months. The situation is very, very unsafe. Every day, every, every weekday, cars are parked alongside both sides of the streets that border on to um, Latrobe University. The problem is created by Latrobe University. The council has sat by and done nothing for, two, for 31 months. Why has this been allowed to occur for such a long time? Sooner or later, there will be an accident, a child will be hurt, an elderly person might be knocked down. Um, there will be a disaster in that suburb. Why aren't you doing something about this? And may I ask, while I'm on my feet, what the members of my ward, Councillor Tim um, Lawrence and... Uh, um, you do Councillor have to address your question to um, myself as the Mayor. Yes, I am, and, and you can address it to them. Um, Councillor uh, Grigor and Councillor Lawrence, I see that Councillor Newsom is not here. These are our representatives. What have they done? What are the contributors to resolving this problem? Um, thank you for those questions relating to parking. Um, as noted before, Council has been working on a new parking strategy and um, that work continues and we hope that it will contribute towards resolving some of these pressures across the whole of Darabin. Um, I will get someone to get back to you in relation to the specifics of the area that you're talking about um, and they can do that tomorrow. For 31 months, 31 months, it's time to do something rather than talk. You've been elected as our representatives. You've been paid by our rates. Thank Please you. do something. Thank you. As I said, someone will get back to you tomorrow to find out more details about the specifics. Thank you. Are there further questions from the chamber? Um, Syrian? Um, just come down to the, you can only make a submission on, is it, it it must relate to an item on the agenda otherwise you can ask a question so submissions can only be received on items on the agenda or you may make a, you may ask a question so I'll try and make it as a question <laughs> <laughs> my name is Nalia Surekumar and I'm the chairperson of the Darabin Ethnic Committees Council what I, my question is that I would want, um, I acknowledge the beautiful statement that you, Madam Mayor, made in relation to the New Zealand disaster. I want that message to be all around Darabin through a banner or something so all of us hopefully be reassured as ordinary people. The, the, the leadership of the Darabin Council is completely with uh, and com completely with the ordinary residents and committed to the, the values that all of us hold. So I'm hoping that your statement could be around the Darabin so all of us can read it. And the other thing I'm hoping that you would consider is having a memorial service for the, uh, the terrible tragedy and invite all the residents to come and share in that. Um, thank you for that question in relation to Council's actions in the face of um, the tragedy in New Zealand. I can let you know that we are looking at how to communicate those, um, that expression that I made in my statement to all residents within Darabin, both through um, something in the local paper and through a banner, and we'll also be working closely with stakeholders on all other things that we can do to assure our community um, that they are safe and that they are included and very much um, valued as members of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Nugent. Mayor Rennie, I've got two questions tonight. The first question is, could you please advise if the following master plans have referenced community groups? The Robinson Cap Master Plan, the Pender Park Master Plan, 
the Batman Park Master Plan, the Mayo Park Master Plan, the Bill Laurie and the Elders Garden Master Plan, and the Bundura Park Precedent Master Plan, and the Fairfield Village Streetscape Master Plan. If not, why not? And also, why is there more master plans in the southern part of the city than the northern part? If you can advise, please, why? Um, thank you for that question, Mr Nugent. I um, hope that you might have a list of those so that we can make sure, thank you, that we can get you an accurate um, response to all of those different ones. I'm aware that some have community reference groups and some don't, and it may be to do with where they are in the master planning process, but we'll provide you with a thorough response to those. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My second question is, Mayor Rennie, could you please advise what can be done to relieve the pressure on Cheddar Road Reservoir? As you would well know, Cheddar Road has gone from a dual road to a single road, uh, a single road. Driving down here tonight, the cars were, for, were from Keon Parade to Jingi Road Reservoir. Also, the traffic drivers shit up side streets and cause traffic delays in Johnson Street, Keon Park. Um, thank you also for that question, Mr Nugent. We'll get further information about exactly what Council is doing in that space to you shortly. Are there any further questions? Ms Vogt. Is it, yes, and which agenda item does it relate to? Okay, thank you. Mayor Rennie, I represent Does Council Care, an unaligned and unfunded group of Darabin residents concerned about the future of Darabin Council's aged care services for older residents. A reason often cited Thank you for that submission, Ms Vogt. Now I saw another question from the Chamber. Um, please come up with your question. Um, please remember to say your name and address before you begin. No, I encourage you to use the microphone for the um, video. No, just the suburb. Just your name and your suburb. Can we just check that that um, microphone is working? Thank you, Councillor Lasseur. My name is Batul Gulani, and um, I'm here. Um, the suburb which I live is uh, Taylor's Hill. But we did just uh, on last Sunday, um, the, on 17th of March, we had an event over here organized under the Shia Muslim Management Committee. Uh, the name is Amar Federation. Uh, with the support of Durban City Council. I'm just here to thank them that they were so supportive to us. Uh, nearly our community was uh, planning to postpone the event, but we continued that, and we are so um, really very blessed that the, the Durban City Council, especially the mayor, helped us uh, such a lot in his, uh, and as, as her presence, support from the local uh, police. So, all, I just want to say thanks to everyone who participated in that, the hall keeper, the uh, brother Aziz, brother Suryan, and all those who supported us. So yes, it was a hard time for us to proceed our event, but because of your help, it's really make us so easy. So I'd just like to thanks. Thank you very much for coming and sharing that with us. Okay. Are there further questions from anyone in no, if there are no further questions, we will keep going with the agenda. Um, so the next item on the agenda is petitions and um, Councillor Lasserf. Uh, I would like to um, present a petition um, 
and that the petition um, be referred to the CEO for consideration and response. So I'll read out the petition now. Um, we, the residents of South Crescent, are writing to lodge a request for parking restrictions during business hours along the residential side, the north of <coughs> South Crescent. Currently, the high density of parked cars on both sides of the road between Simpson Street and Parsons Street contributes to a dangerous narrowing of the road for car and bike users and for children travelling to and from school. The impact of commuter parking congestion also leads to lack of available on-street parking for residents and their visitors, some elderly and frail, and trade workers and contractors. We request time parking restrictions similar to those already in place in other areas adjacent to the train stations, as this would promote commuter parking on the south side of the street, thereby alleviating the on-road congestion uh, and promoting a safer environment for all road users. So that has been signed um, by eight residents, and so I'll um, move a motion that it uh, be referred to the CEO for consideration and response. Thank you. Um, seconded by Councillor McCarthy. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Are there further petitions? Councillor Gwecko. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I have a petition that here, and the petition is from the Does Darabin Care Convener, um, Robin Vogt, who's um, present here tonight. Um, it's a petition that has 80 signatures, um, and it's regarding um, aged care services, and I'll read the petition. Um, we, the uh, undersigned residents and ratepayers of Darabin, petition council to publicly commit to maintaining its current role as a provider of aged care services, including transport, cleaning, personal care, meals, home maintenance and respite care into the future. We urge council not to abandon its role in providing the above aged care services in view of the federal government's privatisation agenda of aged care services. We are proud that Darabin Council is a long-standing provider of high quality aged care services and has built a strong and trusted reputation as a preferred provider with elderly residents and their families in the community. In Darabin, 25,534 people, which represent about 18.8% .8 of the total population, are aged over 60 and many are receiving or will soon require support services to enable them to remain in their home. We firmly believe that current and future community members should continue to have the choice to receive home care services directly from trusted and committed Darabin Council staff. So may, um, I, I submit the, um, the motion um, to uh, to accept this petition and refer it to the CEO for her consideration and, um, and to report back accordingly. Thank you, Councillor Greco. And a seconder for that? Uh, Councillor Le Cerf, thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. That motion is carried. Um, that brings us to item seven on the agenda, urgent business. Um, before we um, move into urgent business um, and the debate um, on, on the numerous items that we have before us tonight, I just want to remind everyone of my expectations in regard to the behaviour and our obligations under the Code of Conduct. At Darabin, we pride ourselves on being a progressive and contemporary council, and in the interests of demonstrating exemplary leadership, I have high expectations that we'll all be professional in our conduct throughout the evening and respectful in our debate. It is important to remember that our council chamber is both a workplace and a public space and we have an obligation to ensure the working environment and public forums are safe for everyone, both emotionally as well as physically. I want to be clear that I will not tolerate any form of personal acrimony or insult, grandstanding or yelling, nor will I put up with talking over the top of one another, any use of unreasonable or impolite language or interjections from the gallery. So, councillors, we do have a lot to get through tonight, and as always, I expect you to direct any council uh, comments or questions through me as the chair. And I'll make sure everyone has an opportunity to participate. So, um, urgent business. Um, yes, Councillor Messina. Uh, through you, Matt, uh, Mayor Rennie, I have a conflict to declare for item number 71.1. I'm currently employed in the aged care industry and have been for 10 years, and I am not in a position to debate the item. At Tabled. Thank you, Councillor Messina. 
we will allow you to leave the chamber. Um, Ms Wilkinson, I'll ask you to give an explanation for the urgent business that's before us tonight. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. Um, in accordance with Clause 21.2 of uh, Council's Meeting Procedure Local Law, uh, I've proposed um, that Council give consideration to this item of urgent business. It has a relationship with Item 8.7 on Council's agenda tonight. Uh, the effect of the urgent business is to um, split out the um, proposed ALGA and MAV motions relating to aged care services so that they can be considered separately from the, the substantive item at 8.7. Um, the reason why I'm proposing it as <coughs> urgent business is because of the timeframes required to submit the motions to be received. Thank you, Ms Wilkinson. Um, with that in mind... So I call for a motion in relation to this item of urgent business. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm happy Greco. to move a motion that we accept this as an urgent business item. Thank you. A seconder? Councillor McCarthy. Thank you. All those in favour? That's accepted onto the agenda as urgent business. Uh, May I move that we, um, um, that, um, that we um, endorse the, the, the motion that's here before us in this report? Um, Thank you, and seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Um, um, Councillor Greco. May I look very quickly, um, and, and I thank the CEO for giving the background in relation to why this is a, an urgent business item. It was an ordinary item of business, but this will enable um, us to deal with this and also enable Councillor Messina to deal with other matters in relation to that same item. Look, um, I, I'm really happy to speak in regards to this um, a particular piece of our um, submission or to the ALGA, which is the Australian Local Government Authority, which will be having their conference mid-year, and also to the MAV, which is the Municipal, um, um, Council, uh, Municipal Association of Victoria. And, um, and, and these are submissions that we are making to these peak bodies in relation to policy areas that Council would like um, these um, peak bodies to advocate on, on behalf of all councils. Now, going to the um, substance of this um, um, motion, and uh, what this motion talks about is to ensure that these bodies take on board council's concern in relation to aged care services. In particular, the, the, the motions, both to the MAV and to the ALGA, uh, talk about um, ensuring that, um, that, that these bodies advocate that, that funding bulk funding to local governments is extended beyond 2020. That's the first part of these motions. And secondly, the second part of this motion, which is also most important, is that we're seeking an exemption um, in relation to the national competition policy uh, for councils in order to compete um, and not be able and not be um, um, need to uh, comply by the competitive neutrality uh, rules as part of the um, federal government's privatisation agenda. Now, we need to um, seek an, an amendment, uh, sorry, an exemption from the state government to enable us um, to do this. Uh, this has been done before in relation to um, uh, recreational centres that councils have, like swimming pools, etc., where there are clear exemptions as part of the national competition policy that enable councils to um, heavily subsidise these types of services. And legal advice that we have received um, uh, suggests that, uh, that we, uh, seek a, we, we could seek an, ex an exemption from the national competition policy to enable councils to continue to, to provide this, um, this, this very important, important service. Now, th this is important, uh, and just very quickly, is that um, the, the bulk fund is going to end in, the, in 2020. There's also a Royal Commission, as we know, in relation to aged care services. And also we've seen most recently um, um, some damning reports that have come out um, on the consequences of privatisation of aged care services, particularly home, home services. And, um, and that report recently was... Um, 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 uh, made public, and there were lots of issues that Ten were seconds. associated with that. So I asked councils to endorse these um, uh, motions so That's that we time. can Thank get you. the strongest possible advocacy in relation to them. Thank you, Councillor Greco. 
Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Greco has, uh, has covered the central issues um, very well, as he, as he always does on this issue. Um, I would note that um, there is a, a line of consistency here in terms of what we're asking for, in terms of what has already been considered in the ALGA space in the past, which is that ALGA itself um, did adopt a resolution in 2018 to write to the government requesting that block funding for these services be maintained for local governments. What we're asking is, of course, for, um, for that focus to maintain, but also to obviously be strengthened. Um, there are two different motions here, and we should make the point that there is one for the Municipal Association of Victoria and one for the Australian Local Governance uh, Association. And obviously the, the pitch is different in each case. Um, we feel we are on strong grounds in terms of arguing for the level of certainty that our older residents and the services that are delivered to them um, deserve, and that is because it is only in April 2020 that um, we expect to get uh, a result or a, certainly a report from the uh, Royal Commission which has been spoken about. So we enter into a phase where we have a Royal Commission report, we have the ending of, of a, a regime potentially, um, and a whole lot of uncertainty creeping into the system. Um, the people that will miss out the most, in fact, are older residents who face, um, uh, obviously, a significant change, and, of course, councils in terms of, in the case of Darabin, who are trying to provide a level of certainty and continuous service um, in what are actually essential services to maintain quality of life. So I second everything that Council Greco has said. Um, I thank the officers for their work and also the community members, um, including the submitter this evening, for their passion on this issue. Um, it is critical that we get the, uh, the support of our peak bodies in this space, but probably just as importantly or more importantly that we get a, a proper airing from um, the seconds. future government and uh, whoever that may be. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there further speakers? Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie. Um, I'd like to support this motion also and commend the community for coming and representing this issue again um, and uh, for the councillors and officers who have prepared it. It's very important for, that Darabin uh, is at the forefront of this debate with our peak bodies because in this space we are leaders in the country, uh, both in regards to the provision of services, the absence of waiting lists and the size of our subsidy to this service. Um, and over the years, as federal governments have withdrawn from this service, we have made decision after year after year to maintain up to $6 million um, subsidy in it. Now, um, uh, tonight I was also reminded by the parking, um, the resident with the parking problem in Kingsbury, that these residents that make up 25% of our city have often paid rates for 50 years. So they are not a drain on the current budget. They created the over a billion dollars worth of assets that we all enjoy today by paying their rates. So in Darabin, we view that quality services and quality payment for the staff that provide it is a great thing. And unfortunately, in this climate of national deregulation, uh, our residents have great risks, great risks to lose quality services. So with the uncertainties that were flagged by Councillor McCarthy, it's very important that we lobby for the continuation of block services and I believe the opposition hasn't uh, outlined completely uh, their policies on this. And um, perhaps um, uh, in the chaos that's sort of in Canberra these days, Ten seconds. this issue has, needs to have some firm attention from our sector. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there further speakers? Being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Uh, we'll get Councillor Messina before continuing on with the agenda.
So we're now at item eight on the agenda, consideration of reports, and the first item is 8.1. Happy to move that. Uh, thank you, Councillor McCarthy, and seconded by Councillor Le Cerf. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, it's a real pleasure. I had the pleasure of moving this um, same item uh, a number of years ago. Um, we have enjoyed uh, in High Street Northcote a strong support for a special charge scheme which, uh, as councillors would be aware, is a mechanism through which um, businesses in High Street co-contribute towards um, a combined promotional and marketing effort for the shopping strip. Um, they have a great deal of involvement in the direction and expenditure of those funds um, in partnership with our economic development team here in Darabin. And this particular scheme has been in place um, for a number of years now. It in enjoys strong support, as the, council out as the council report outlines. And in fact, uh, it has been the request of the Northcote Business Association that council go through the process once again of renewing this scheme under the same particulars that have been in place in the past. Um, this scheme would effectively pick up from the current scheme, uh, so effectively a con continuation of the program that's in place and would take us from 2019 into 2024. We do need to go through a process of, um, of notifying our intention to declare a special charge scheme, and that is what the recommendation listed in the report uh, does, is engages that process, whereby that we then receive submissions from anyone who is, of, who is interested. Um, I would acknowledge that not all traders um, support the scheme, and, uh, and that is um, obviously their right, and they are encouraged to submit, as are those that support, and anyone else that has an interest. Um, we want to hear if the scheme is, is right, uh, if the scheme needs um, modification, strengthening in any way at all, and of course that is a proper process that we go through under the statutory requirements. So I'll end it there. Um, it is good to see this back on our agenda, and of course um, uh, we have a similar scheme that we'll be looking at for Fairfield to renew as well. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lesserf. Uh, thank you, Mayor Rennie. Um, the only thing I'll um, add to Councillor McCarthy's um, comments is that, you know, the why, why do we do this? We know that um, vibrant, successful shopping centres contribute so much back to our local communities in terms of local employment, diversity of shops that are, that are on offer, um, a space for people to gather and come together as a community, um, a sense of social inclusion uh, and... Um, particularly, I guess, in, in this area on High Street, Northcote is, is well known um, for its characteristics and its feel um, as the High Street shops. So I think um, <coughs> the, the special charge will raise money that will help to promote um, and, and market uh, what, is, what we all love about those shops, bring people there and, and ensure that it continues as a, a vibrant shopping strip into the future. Thank you, Councillor Lesserf. Are there any further speakers? No? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Um, item 8.2 on the agenda, the Preston Business Advisory. Uh, Councillor Messina, moved by Councillor Messina and seconded by Councillor O'Meara. Councillor Messina. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. I just want to um, echo the sentiments that were put through by Councillor McCarthy and Councillor Surf. Uh, yes, sorry. Um, this special rate levy, which is paid by the businesses in the area, was basically formed by a committee and the members of the committee didn't necessarily actually pay the rate levy themselves. So we had members that were also business owners in the area that but not in wholly in the Preston Precinct. Firstly, I want to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of past and pre present members of PBAC. So I'm moving the officer's recommendation. Councillor, three times Mayor, Councillor Vince Fontana, current Councillor Julie Williams, who have advocated for many, many years for PBAC. Officer Wendy Denning and the matriarch of the um, Preston Central, P Penny Jamison. I'm very proud to have served as chair and co-chair of this um, committee. In the last 12 months, we have banded together and launched a social media campaign which, which was um, evident in the success of the Chinese New Year and is a testament to the evolution of PBAC. Economic development is quintessential to the Preston Precinct. Previously, members that did not have to pay the rate levies were welcomed, but what this motion will do is put the control back to the people that, are, the businesses that actually pay the rate levy. I look forward to the evolution of the Preston Business Association, its marketing, continued branding, and will um, look forward to the Preston Central to continue to ignite. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Messina. Uh, Councillor Amir. 
Uh, thank you. I'd also like to uh, echo my thanks um, to the members of the Preston Business Advisory Committee, the business owners who have given um, many hours to the committee, the officers who've um, worked hard, and also councillors Messina and Williams um, for your work on the committee. Uh, and congratulations for the many achievements that we can um, read about in the report. And uh, certainly Preston Central businesses are better off because of the hard work of the Business Advisory Committee committee. Um, what this recommendation does is basically bringing the Preston Business Precinct uh, more in line with the other business precincts in terms of the management, um, similar to Northcote and Fairfield. And while there will be parallels between the old and new models in terms of the activities undertaken, the pro promotion of businesses, uh, the creation of a co the cohesion of identity, um, Facebook promotion, uh, events, um, quite diverse um, business promotion activities. Um, this new model will allow for uh, greater participation from the businesses themselves uh, and also more autonomy. So Council will, of course, continue to provide support for promoting Preston businesses and I'm excited to see the um, central Preston area continue to grow as we get more and more people moving to the area and the uh, development of the central Preston precinct. Uh, as noted in the report, the current levy will uh, remain until a new one is established. Uh, and yeah, thanks again for everyone for your hard work in um, making Preston Central so vibrant. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Further speakers? Councillor Lawrence? Um, Mayor Rennie, I just had a question um, sure. regarding the report. Just, um, um, I was looking there, has Kramer Street Hotel been included in this? There, I know there was some discussion in briefings and there was going to be further information. Um, Ms Olivier, can you shed light on that? Sorry, I actually missed the beginning of the question, Mayor Rennie. The question related to whether the um, Kramer's Hotel was part of the precinct. Can I, can I actually ask Wendy Dinning to uh, respond? Um, certainly, if Ms Dinning comes down, that'll be fine. So, um, to be clear, this decision is about the um, establishment of a business association rather than the declaration of the special rate which would come to Council for a future decision. So, um, we're not expecting that site to be included in the special rate discussion that is yet to come, but that's actually not the matter in front of you tonight. Um, thank you. Does that answer your question, Councillor Lawrence? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there further speakers? No, there being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. That brings us to 8.3 on the agenda. Councillor McCarthy, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Le Cerf. Councillor McCarthy. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I can pretty much say everything that I said for Northcote in relation to Fairfield, other than um, obviously it's a different location, a different mix of businesses, and obviously in our Fairfield context um, we have the Fairfield Village um, uh, rather than um, High Street Northcote. Um, but the, the story is, is very much the same. We have a special charge scheme that's been in place for 20 years. It received strong support um, from traders and in this case we've also received a request for a continuation of the current scheme. This scheme uh, at Fairfield is, is a bit smaller, um, but despite that, um, the, the slightly smaller size of the scheme, um, it has delivered uh, an extraordinary amount of activity. And if, you, if you're on the Fairfield Traders um, e-news, you see the rich range of activities that occur throughout the year, um, everything from comedy and music nights and um, dinners ranging across the different um, food businesses um, through to the, the traders themselves coming together to be deeply involved in the development of the Fairfield Village Design Guidelines. So we, have, um, we are very lucky to have business associations that are thriving that have strong engagement, strong involvement from their members, um, and obviously a really strong strategic and promotional direction to make sure that 
local residents and people beyond our area know how valuable it is to support those businesses as well. But not only to see that economic activity, but also to support that sense of place and that sense of community that Councillor Le Cerf referred to earlier. So I'll end it there. We are at this stage um, putting this out to declare the special scheme and of course inviting submissions from interested parties. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Le Cerf. I don't have anything further to add. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? No, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. That brings us to item 8.4 on the agenda, review of the planning controls. Mayor, um, I'd like to move a, a deferral motion in relation to 8.4. Um, is there a second for that? Um, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Just, can I just ask, Mayor, just in relation to the motion proposed, do we need a reason for the deferral to be considered? I'll seek advice on that. Okay, um, that motion will need to be debated, so um, Councillor Greco. Uh, may, if I could just have one minute. I've just been handed something by an officer which may um, um, take us down a different course. In the interim, could we get a, a response to Councillor McCarthy's question in terms of the urgency of the motion? I don't think that's actually the question Councillor McCarthy asked. He asked if we needed, there needed to be a reason for the deferral. Well, can I ask a question then? <laughs> um, I was going to suggest that in the meantime, we could um, move to item 8.5 on the agenda if someone wished to actually put a motion. That I'll move a procedural motion to um, move directly to 8.5 and return to 8.4 following debate of that item. Uh, thank you. Is there a seconder for that? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Amir. Uh, thank you. That's all those in favour? Okay, so we're going to hear 8.5 and then return um, to 8.4. And that um, 8.5 is moved by Councillor McCarthy and seconded by Councillor Le Cerf. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, Councillors, for moving straight to this item. Uh, I never get tired of um, these, these ones. Um, it's one of the great joys of this term is that one of the commitments we made in our council plan was to see... Um, Solar installed on 4,000 buildings across our city, continuing the um, incredibly successful Solar Saver program, but not only continuing the program um, in its previous form, but expanding it to be available both in terms of the size of the systems, um, moving all the way up to 30 kilowatt systems, which accommodates a larger house or even a block of apartments, um, as well as making it available to a range of um, people throughout our community. Um, but obviously, with our first priority being low-income households, pensioners and those for whom English is not a first language. Um, it's a real pleasure this evening to once again have a great uh, batch of households that have put their hands up and said they're ready to go to become solar saver households. In this tranche, um, it's another 147 households that are signing up um, out of an initial series of quotes uh, in the order of about 800. That ratio um, is roughly the same for, uh, or very similar for each tranche of solar savers. We get a lot of interest, some quotes go out, and then different people sign up. And so we are starting to see um, uh, that, that flow through. Significantly, the numbers are important in relation to this. Um, the solar installed as a result of this scheme, um, should it be uh, supported tonight, um, will result in 780.4 kilowatts of um, renewable energy in the city of Darabin, which keeps us on that pathway to achieving our uh, significant target of doubling the amount of solar in Darabin over the next four years, or over the current term. Um, this is going to result in 1,951 tonnes of CO2 um, taken out of the city, which is a greater outcome as well in terms of mitigation. But significantly, um, the, the safety and, um, and comfort levels for particularly our older and vulnerable residents who will be able to put on their air conditioners on those extremely hot days and those hot nights and feel not like they're not going to completely exhaust their power bill um, and they can stay cool at the same time, which was the foundation of this program. Um, and in that sense, uh, it's, it's great to see that 26.5% of the households are in the category of low-income households 
pensioners and um, households with low proficiency in English. So we get the environmental outcome, the social outcome in an uh, economically sustainable way. And of course, just like the other solar saver schemes, um, the money will be repaid over a 10 year period where every household is pretty much guaranteed to, uh, to save more than they have to pay, which is a great outcome as well. So thanks to all, and congratulations to all the solar saver households. Um, once this uh, declaration of intent is go goes through, then we'll move, out, move to finalising the scheme. Sorry, thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Um, Councillor Lawrence, did you have a question? question yeah. um, you may ask the question now and then um, Councillor um, will speak. Certainly, um, Mayor Rennie. I just had a question um, in relation to the um, financial interaction of the state solar homes Victoria rebate. Um, and um, I'm not foreshadowing any amendments or anything. I just want to understand there has to be advertising and there's a process we need to get through, mm -hmm. statutory process. But I was just wondering, um, that seems to be an unknown. And um, is, is there any contingency we need for variables on that, that thing, given that we're striking a special rate levy, it kind of locks us in? Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'll address that question to Ms Moxon, perhaps, or Ms Livia. Through you, Mayor Rennie, we have a separate contract with the Victorian Government through Sustainability Victoria for Derebin residents to access the rebate, to access the rebate to, through Solar Sustainability Victoria, they have to qualify. So not all declaration households will qualify but we have covered off uh, the ones that do. So, for example, tonight in the declaration, there's roughly about a quarter, so they will definitely qualify, and that agreement has been signed by both parties, and that's guaranteed for this financial year. Thank you for that response. Um, Councillor Lesseuf. Uh, again, I didn't have much to, uh, to Councillor McCarthy's um, comments. I'm very support, obviously very supportive of this motion. Um, the thing I did want to raise um, to people's attention this evening was that we are nearing nearly 2,000 households to um, be covered by the Solar Saver program. And um, further to Councillor McCarthy's comments on our target to double renewable energy in Darabin, um, over the last three council meetings, we've, um, we've declared charges um, on a number of households to up to 2.9 megawatts. So that now brings us to 62% of the way there to our target. Um, uh, I think we're about two years in, and so we've got another two years to meet our target. So we're well and truly on the way in making sure that we uh, reach 36 megawatts by 2021. Thank you, Councillor Lesseuf. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Um, we will return to item 8.4 on the agenda. Um, may I uh, move that this um, item be deferred? Um, until when? Um, uh, that, that this item be deferred um, and that it be considered by a council briefing and to come back to the council at the next meeting. At the next meeting. So the next council meeting is on the 8th of April. Yes. So that would be um, that. Is there a seconder? Um, yes, I'll second the motion, uh, Mayor Rennie. Thank you. Look, I'll just speak in relation to the deferral. Uh, just very quickly, look, I've been in... in yeah, I've been in cons uh, consultation with... Um, with our general manager that covers um, planning. Look, councillors, you would have received this report. It's a fairly dense report. And uh, we, we only received this report um, late, not, as, not in the usual time that we get our agenda papers. Um, uh, look, I, I've had a thorough look at it. And there are many questions that, um, that, that arise out of this report. And that rather than making a decision on the run in regards to this report because we are making decisions here. It's not a report that's, um, that, it, that is simply to be noted. I would not have any problem about um, um, dealing with it here tonight. But given that there are decisions and given that what's in this report is that it completely reconfigures, if you like, how we see the, um, 
the, the Preston Market site area because it takes in another third, if you like, of that site. And, um, and as you can see in the report that we have um, at the map at the back where uh, it, it actually asks for us to incorporate in the planning amendment process and, and, then, and there's also issues about the means of doing that and how that's done, you know, working with the state government, et cetera. So there's lots of complex issues there. And as you can see now, uh, this becomes a massive site. I should have said way at, right at the outset, this has become um, so, not for any negative reasons, actually for quite some positive reasons. Something that we've been advocating for is in relation to the sky rail that will impact on this area uh, given that the sky rail has been prioritised but not yet been endorsed uh, to happen. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done there and there's a lot of thinking, I believe, you know, that needs to be done. Both our officers have done some thinking around this, but I think we need to engage in that conversation um, as, as councillors and that before we put any motions to the state government that we're actually absolutely clear that we're exploring all options in the best way forward to develop um, um, structure plans for this area which has now grown, if, if you like, to be one third bigger than what it um, originally was envisaged to be. Um, I appreciate that what's in the motion that's been put forward by, um, by our officers and covers off, covers off on many areas and tries to put the council in, on, on the best footing in relation, to the, uh, in relation to the VPA and also in relation to the uh, Minister for Planning. But I think we need a, a little bit of a conversation around this, um, tease out some of the issues or questions that we may have and then come back in a much more informed manner. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Um, Councillor Lawrence is seconded, but Councillor Surf, do you have a question? Uh, I just have a question in terms of the impact of the deferral motion. So um, this report has come to us this evening, and what will be the impact if we defer this decision until April the 8th? Um, thank you. I'll pass that to Ms Olivier. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. Um, the main... Uh, impact would actually be uh, we'd need to proceed with the community engagement on the basis that it currently is. So we'd be reviewing um, with the VPA, we've, we're in the planning phase of, for the next um, part of community engagement to look at the market site. Um, actually that would need to proceed with that, with that focus. We'd essentially, the extra three weeks would preclude us um, also seeking community feedback on a broader area. Um, yeah. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Uh, I guess I have a supplementary. Is there anything um, specific in terms of community engagement activities happening between now and then? Or is it the, just the planning of the community engagement? Yeah. Uh, so, no, we're not expecting to have community engagement sessions between now and the next council meeting. We're at the detailed planning stage, so there's... Um, you know, I'm expecting preparation of materials, for example. Thank you. Counts uh, Councillor Messina, do you have a question? Yes, my, through you, um, Mayor Rennie. My question was uh, similar to Councillor Surf. My question was also adding to the date when the commencement of April 2019, the uh, community engagement date actually is. Do we have a date? Ms. Livier? So, no, we haven't locked down a um, specific launch date, and that's um, partly because this matter informs locking down that date. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie. Look, um, why I've uh, seconded this motion is um, three issues, really. One is I've been trying to struggle through this today myself and understand the ramifications. And at first, I'll have to admit, my perception was, well, that doesn't matter. We just continue with what we're doing because we need to maintain community trust in this issue. But having gone through the report, the, the actual extra... And I just assumed there's already a three-storey building there. What, what else is to develop? But, of course... There is a considerable amount of land, including the car parking on this side of the railway. And the issue then goes, 
Um, we have been, some of us have been through the main plans a million times, um, but this opens up a whole lot of other considerations. Now, I'm personally going for a deferral motion because I need to study this more and find out more, and there's a lot of questions about that maybe the planning officers are saying they're already in detailed areas, we can tell us. Number two, we need to bring the community along with us, not have an unpublished email report suddenly decided on. And number three, um, I have a ward councillor missing and another councillor, which I, I believe both have submitted mandates to the community regarding this site. And I don't feel comfortable doing a fast decision. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there any further speakers? Councillor McCarthy. Uh, I have a question, uh, Mayor. It's, it's different to Councillor Surf's question in the sense that, um, based on what um, Ms Olivia said, if, if Council were to defer this, the decisions that would then be taken at the next Council meeting, um, if, if it was a decision taken to adopt the recommendation, would that impact on the, on the, um, the delivery of the work in terms of the community engagement that has actually been articulated, or would we not have the community engagement that is articulated? So if that's clear, because I'm interested in the question that Ms Olivia said about broadening the community engagement, whether that will still be able to occur, should we defer this and then reconsider it at the next council meeting? Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Ms Olivia? Uh, so, this this report amongst um, this report proposes broadening the community engagement so that you can have a conversation in the, with the community to hear from them about both parts of that land. Yeah. One part of that land is currently being um, the planning controls are being reviewed by the VPA in partnership with us. The other part of that land, council's currently the planning authority for. Um, if there wasn't the option of doing that together, we would seek with any planning work that we're involved in to get good quality community feedback. We'd, we might have to stage it though. So we might look at one part of the site first and then hear about another part of the site later. So it's, we wouldn't seek to compromise the quality of that feedback in any way. Thank you. Councillor Lesurf. Sorry, can I ask a follow-up question to that? Um, and maybe this was behind Councillor McCarthy's question. Will deferring this matter push back the timelines of the other community engagement so that you know what the decision is on this and compromise the timelines of the VPA process? Or will the VPA process go ahead in April um, and then a second process will run alongside it for this other parcel of land? Um, to be honest, I think we'd have to map out both courses for you to, and to bring that advice back to you. But I think um, it would be hard to meet the current time frame and join it up. You couldn't have both. Thank you for that answer. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, Mayor, on the basis of those answers, um, I'm going to speak against the deferral. Um, I do so whilst I appreciate... Um, Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Greco's um, points about wanting to understand the complexity of the report, I would just bring back to Councillor's attention that we have discussed these matters at length in Council briefings. Um, there are no new ideas in this report. Um, in fact, the very notion that we should take the, every opportunity to give our community the chance to have a say on these matters, not just in relation to the Preston Market site itself, but also in relation to the very specific changed context that has now occurred with the level crossing removal. This was not in play at the time because we did not know the shape and scope of that project when we considered um, our position in relation to Preston Market at an earlier event. So all this motion is doing is actually trying to open up the dialogue with the state government to gain some commitment to that community engagement um, and it, as, as point, uh, C, point 1C makes clearly, um, to seek a formal commitment from the State Government, the Council will be retained as the planning authority and the responsible authority for the development of planning controls. We are seeking commitments to things that we have already 
um, voiced concerns about in this chamber that we have often voted on, in fact, and certainly the very notion about broadening the community in consultation that is about to occur is why there is an element of urgency to this. Um, we need to move in this direction, councillors. Um, to delay is simply to um, undermine the potential for the community to have their say in relation to both parts of this site, not just the one. And, uh, and I would be really disappointed if we got to the stage where our community was engaged in one consultation process that had strong support from the VPA and another one that was almost running and trying to play catch up. We run the risk of confusing our community, but probably more importantly, undermining their ability Ten to influence the outcome. So on that basis, I can't support the deferral. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Amir. Uh, this is a motion that I um, admit to having mixed feelings about because I do uh, understand the merits of what's been raised. However, I would like to speak against the motion. Uh, the reasons are that what's presented here in the report, um, which we've had since Friday, is uh, very much in line with Council's goals for the market, particularly around community consultation, um, protection for the elements of the market that uh, people love and the integration with the surrounding areas. And if we delay for... Um, three weeks. There's a few risks. Um, one is missing the opportunity. There's no guarantees here. We're relying on um, support um, from the state government to um, allow this um, to happen, and that's not guaranteed. Um, secondly, if we defer, we may uh, present ourselves as appearing to not be considerate of the needs and timelines um, of this bigger ongoing project with a lot of other players, not just us. There's also, um, from the answers given, there's a strategic advantage in acting now rather than later. Um, thirdly, as a result um, of the deferral, it could lead to the reduction of opportunity for community input, which is something that all of us councillors have uh, spoken about as being really important and continues to be very important to the community. We want to make the decision that maximises the opportunity for community input. The other risks I would see is that in a scenario where, for example, we did delay, we then pass a motion in three weeks' time saying we want to do our own consultation process and the state partners... Uh, change their plans or change their flyers to accommodate for that, that's potentially quite a significant um, waste, to be blunt, of state resources, of public money in staff time, in um, printing, in advertising, whatever the case may be. Uh, and I don't think it's fair Ten to um, impose that cost. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Are there further speakers? No? Um, Councillor Greco, you have a right of reply. Thank you, May. Look, and I thank the contributions of the various councillors. Look, uh, just in response to some of the issues that have been raised, um, I don't believe that a three-week delay would over um, would unnecessarily uh, put this project back. Because if you look at the recommendations, councillors, is that we're calling on the state government, we're inviting them to actually take on some of these issues. There's, there's no mention really there about that we're about to embark on a consultation process. We have we're seeking um, a commitment from the state government. To, to go down that process. So the question is that they will need time to consider that and so that and as, as a result of that, um, you know, we're not making that decision to, to, to halt the, or delay the, the, the consultation process. I think it's also important, councillors, that given the nature of this area, which is a massive area, a very, very important area for the development of, of the heart of, of Darabin, is that we, we, put, we, we frame our engagement with the VPA and with other stakeholders um, before we actually, and look at all possibilities, uh, before we actually um, uh, put forward um, some, 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 some suggestions or ask for some commitments from those various stakeholders. I think we have to be absolutely clear uh, uh, amongst ourselves about what we're about to in, um, em embark on and what we are actually getting ourselves into. Because whilst I don't disagree, obviously I don't disagree with, this with the community engagement, but it's, the question becomes how that engagement gets framed what the stakeholder expectations are around those engagements, and we have to be clear about that before we um, before we proceed. With Ten this. seconds. So, yes, just look. I just ask councillors just to really reflect. Um, let's hold back just for three weeks because I'm, I'm also sure that there's other options That's that we time. could possibly explore. Thank you, Councillor Greco. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? 
And against? That motion is lost. I'd like to put, sorry. I'd like to put forward the motion as listed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Amir. Uh, and seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Councillor O'Meara. Uh, so the proposal that we um, <laughs> have before us, it d does have a lot, of a lot of different parts, but in essence, um, what's being proposed here is uh, that the upcoming community engagement be broadened to inform the review of the planning controls, but that council would review the planning controls for the area um, towards St George's Road. So we're talking about not where the footprint of the market itself is. Um, we're talking about the western edge of the car park uh, and the uh, area around uh, Preston Station. Um, the reason for this is because we want to make sure that we have an integrated site. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, Central Preston, Preston Station and the market is as cohesive and connected as possible so that people don't see it as um, bits and pieces. I, one of the uh, briefings that we received about the Preston market, someone described the market as an island within an island. And I think <laughs> that's how it is at the moment. It's hard to get to. And even <coughs> once in terms of um, access by on foot or by bike, it's not visible from the major roads. Um, even once you get there, you have to battle your way through the car park. That uh, is exactly the kind of thing that we're hoping to change through these planning processes. And to do that, we need to consider um, the site as a whole. The other um, factor is that we know how much the community cares about the market and want to make sure um, that there's as much opportunity for community input as possible and it, uh, I believe that this process will allow for that. Well, it's also, also uh, we're very excited about the commitment from the state government to the level crossing removal, uh, not just at Bell Street, but also Oak Over, Kramer and Murray Roads. And that is uh, one of the main things that is driving this process now, um, that we'll be considering the site within the context of the level crossing removal and the opportunities that brings uh, for creation of space, for more integrated tra transport and for better access to the site. Um, because council is neither the owner of the market nor res the responsible authority, um, I'm pleased to support this recommendation um, because I think it will help to strengthen the integration. We as council know um, our community. We've been working with the BPA for a long time now. It has been a long process uh, and I know there's people in the community who are keen to start um, seeing some... Uh, more concrete plans. Um, we've still got, uh, we've had a, done a lot of work, there's still a little bit of a way to go, uh, but I think this is the right small step um, for us to be taking at this time. It does rely um, on agreement with the state partners, um, and I hope that's something that will be forthcoming. And as the issues raised about um, needing more conversation, I hope that that's something that can come um, once that commitment has been made to negotiate the terms and conditions. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Amir covered all the issues um, really well. Um, I just would draw Council's attention just so that we're all very clear on the, uh, the urgency of this and the time frame that we're dealing with. Um, on page, uh, page nine of the report, it, it does state very clearly in relation to the upcoming community engagement program, which is being led by the VPA, not by Council, uh, because the VPA is the responsible authority in this context. Uh, that that is actually expected to commence in April. Our next council meeting is on the 1st of April. Um, so if we are to have any luck in actually getting a broader community consultation program over the line, um, that action is required tomorrow. And, uh, and that's why we're dealing with this this evening. I just would also pick up on something that Councillor Amir said, which I think is really um, critical for us to understand, which is that uh, the state processes that are being undertaken both in relation to the level crossing site and also the consideration of Preston Market Controls are not processes that are decided upon in this chamber. They are processes that are decided upon in Spring Street and other state buildings. And for us to have the best chance and for our community to have the best chance to have a positive impact on what happens there, which includes also ensuring what doesn't happen there, because we do not want to see um, the state government see the land around the Preston Station as land simply for sale um, to, uh, to developers. We see those, that, those parcels of land as community assets. And one of the key points of advocacy for the level crossing removals in this chamber um, was to see 
a new community asset be made available, those two MCGs worth of green open space that would be unlocked along that corridor. You do not get that sort of outcome unless you are at the table in the conversation and putting forward helpful suggestions that people have time to digest and to take on board. So I sincerely hope, and I know that our officers have been working around the Ten seconds. on this, to try to get these sorts of um, concepts across. Um, it is absolutely critical that we lead with a strong foot. Um, our community expects um, that from us. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Okay. Councillor Greco. Uh, I have an amendment that I'll be putting forward. We're just waiting for that to come up on the screen. Um, we'll deal with the amendment first. Thanks, Councillor Lawrence. Um, is that acceptable to the mover? Um, no. Um, thank you. Is there a seconder for that amendment? Okay, is there a seconder for that? Okay. Uh, Councillor Greco, is that your understanding? In the motion. Just wait, we're just... Councillor Greco, is what's on screen your understanding of the amendment that you've put in? We might be missing E. We think that's um, what was intended. Um, e was missing from the last one. So the only thing that's changing is that the D that was in the paperwork is being replaced by the D that is now on screen in red. Um, Councillor Greco, is that correct? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. And I, look, I thank the officers for just assisting. Just wait, um, Councillor Greco, just wait. So I was just ask, seeking confirmation that that's correct now, what's on screen. Yes, it is correct now. Okay, yes. so I need a seconder. I'll second that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco. Uh, look, thank you, Mayor, and I thank the officers for um, uh, providing me with the wording for, for, for this amendment. Um, essentially, Councillors, what this amendment does is that um, it looks at a further option. That's why I was seeking to try and defer this motion so we could actually discuss this further option at a briefing and come back with a, a much more um, um, in, informed uh, knowledge. But I'll try to my best in in the two and a half minutes that I have to try and explain what this motion tries to do. Firstly, because the area um, has been, in a sense, extended of what becomes under uh, consideration for um, planning controls, um, th this motion essentially seeks uh, to get to make the council the, um, the, the responsible authority uh, to regain the, the role of the responsible authority over Preston Market. Why is that? The reason behind that is that because now we're dealing with a substantially much bigger area, it's important that, that the key decisions, at least at the initial stage, are, uh, are sponsored or worked through by this council and by this council's community and not by the VPA or the, um, or, or the Minister for Planning. Ultimately, we know that whatever um, um, structure plan that we come up with or amendment to the, um, to, to the structure plan has to get um, ministerial endorsement, but at least that the work is done 
and by this council on behalf of its community and not done by the VPA or some other body um, that we have to work with. This enables, then to, uh, this enables us then to look at this site in its a holistic sense. Obviously working with the other stakeholders, which is the um, um, VicTrack the, um, the, and, and, and also the, uh, the private landowners, of course we'll have to do that. But, but, what, but what my motion does is that it actually streamlines it back into the council so that the council has um, oversight over the development of any future planning controls both over the market and also, as the report itself says, over the, um, over the area that's been marked in red, outside of the areas that have been exempt uh, because they're the core areas for the, um, uh, for the transport passage. So that's what this motion tries to do. It tries to give the council the role that it ought to have in relation to important sites like this. So I urge councillors to support this motion. Um, it enables us to um, consult with our community but we are consulting with our community. We're not consulting our community through third parties. We are directly consulting with our community and feeding back the information from our community into the development of planning controls for this site. So I urge councillors to support this motion and like that, that the council could take um, proper ownership over the development of planning controls. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie. Um, I'm not going to ask the questions I had to ask. I will ask them about process at another time. But I've never seen this site rushed in such a manner. Um, this uh, notion, there's a couple of notions that have been put forward here. Obviously, a threshold issue first is to consult all the council. And I have not had enough time to, to consider all the ramifications of an integration of these planning matters. We're excluding two councillors. We're excluding the community of asking that threshold question, which is listed as an option in the paper. So again, we lock out our community in this discussion. Now, I've been in this journey for a while. I inherited the... the uh, I was not on council when they adopted the blueprint to preserve the economic heart of the market. But we have seen the owners tried to sideline that and push the market against High Street in a substandard method. We've had to claw back from that to preserve the market footprint. We had to engage sometime hostile planning ministers on that. This uh, current proposal, we're quite clear on what happens with level crossings. We know the technology that's going involved. We know the open spaces involved. If VPA and the developer go down a path of trying to do trade-offs with both the economic focus of the market or any of the open space, then we're failing our community. We need to get control back to this. There is no trade-offs between this pink area and the blue area that are worth considering as an integrated plan. And when I hear people say it's an island within an island, this council and community has been fighting to keep that island of economic activity, that market there, that's been the focus of our entire battle. They want to side, they want to push it to the side. They want to get rid of it. They want to increase heights. They want to give us a building that doesn't have enough car parking. And we are basically outsourcing our responsibility to save the market tonight. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Amir. Uh, I'm speaking against the amendment. Uh, so on the 27th of February 2017, in this chamber, uh, uh, Councillor Greco put forward a motion that was passed unanimously by the councillors. Uh, motion, that part of the motion, 1C, states, Council requests the Planning Minister, Richard Wynne, um, use his powers of intervention to call in the planning application permit, listing the numbers for the Preston Market site, regarding the Preston Market site under section 97B of the Planning and Environment Act 1987. That was something which at the time was supported by all of us. It was strongly supported by the community. The community and we as council felt that uh, 
it was the minister, we, if the, with the intervention from the minister, we could get the best outcome because it would require the state government to get really closely involved with the issues, to understand what was happening. And at that time, we also felt really strongly that we wanted to retain a strong involvement with the process. And all of those things that we asked for, we don't, haven't got to the end of the process yet, but those two things, wanting the minister to call it in and retaining our position as a um, part, strong co-partner, we have got both of those things now. So to be jeopardising that by flip-flopping around, asking for one thing, when we get it saying, actually, no, we want something else, I think is not the way to present ourselves as strong leaders who know what we want, who stick to our guns and make the best decisions in the long term, not just looking for now, but for the long-term protection of the market, um, to get that positive outcome of the protection. I know that the current situation is um, not ideal. There's pros and cons to each approach, um, but I do strongly Ten believe seconds. that we should stick to the commitment that all nine of us made two years ago. Thank you, Councillor Amir. Are there further speakers? Uh, I'll also speak against, Mayor. Uh, Councillor McCarthy. Um, I hope to add um, as a significant point as Councillor Amir, but I, I don't think I will be able to because um, for me, um, that is, uh, that is absolutely critical to um, actually reflect on where we've been and where we are now. Um, I would note, though, that um, were this uh, amendment to be incorporated into the substantive motion, um, we would effectively be saying to the Minister, uh, at this stage we are not looking to ask you to think about the station and, uh, and of course, the uh, Preston market um, it, holistically, um, because they are right next to each other. They are part of the same precinct, uh, but rather we would like you to do something which we know in our hearts and we know based on all government practice up until now is completely unlikely to happen. So if we were to go down this path and do the flip-flopping action that Councillor Amir has so eloquently described, we would basically be saying to the Minister, please don't take us seriously anymore, because that is the effect of that request. Um, we made that request, the community made that request, the Minister supported that request to try to find a way forward. If we were to go back and to do what Councillor Greco is proposing right now, which is effectively to put the decisions around that site in this chamber where we actually don't have all the powers that we need in order to dictate the, the, the best outcome for the community, then we run the risk of losing an enormous amount of credibility in this. So I simply can't support the amendment. I know Councillor Greco is coming from a, a, a good space, wanting to see a good outcome, but I think the logic is incorrect. And, uh, and therefore the proposal itself is incorrect. We made, and Councillor Greco put forward that motion, we made that request to the Minister. Um, why would we go back on that now? It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but significantly, we would also miss the opportunity to make that point. Ten seconds. We must see um, an integrated planning approach for the market and the station. That's what our community expects. Thank you. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put the amendment to the vote. All those in favour and against? The amendment is lost. We'll therefore return to the motion as it was before, so I'll get that uh, May motion. I have an another motion that I'd like to put? Um, do you mean another amendment, Councillor Greco? Oh, sorry, another, sorry, an amendment in, in relation to the, to the motion before us. Okay, we'll just wait uh, until... The, the amendment is... Um, it's just one word, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. just, I picked up a word that if you go to... Um, uh, F... <laughs> Um, here it's uh, FC, FC, I mm -hmm. uh, can't see it up there. It um, currently reads, support the continuous operation of the Preston market during and throughout construction by ensuring the footprint of the land required for the works at Preston Station is minimised. FC to substitute the word maximise, where, oh, that's right, it's the second line in FC where especially that it maximises retention of car parking to the word uh, maintains retention of car parking. Is that acceptable to... Um, that's acceptable to the move or is it acceptable to the seconder? Uh, so maintains, replaces, maximises. And so maximises will be deleted. 
Can we just get a comment from our officers in terms of planning to speak, whether that cuts the mustard? Um, Ms Olivia, can you comment on that from a planning point of view? Uh, I don't anticipate a challenge with that change. Um, is that acceptable? Yeah, that case, okay, that amendment has been accepted. Um, that's now the substantive just, motion. Just before, um, just to be absolutely clear of the intent, so the, it, so it would read especially that it maintains um, uh, existing car parking currently used by Preston Market customers, maintains existing car parking currently used by Preston Market, just to make my intent. Uh, a little bit more explicit. Um, is that acceptable or would you like to ask a further question? I guess my position would be that I support the intention for uh, the, an equal number of car parking places to be remained available, whether they be at the current okay, location so seems unlikely. I'll, I'll so no to yeah. I think it's unnecessary. That it maintains. Can I seek clarification as to whether that was what you understood, Ms. Olivier, with the initial change? Um, I think what I don't know is um, the level crossing removal works are going to be a big construction project and normally what we see is that the staging and the location of that construction work moves around. Um, so what I don't know is how the detail plays out and whether it will be feasible for them to do that sort of exactly where it is or that they'll need to think about it in a different way. Um, Ms Wilkinson, can I have a comment also? Through you, Mayor Rennie, um, uh, the critical words in 1F relate to um, the sort of preamble which talks about removal work should, so seek to retain car parking, so should seek to. Um, uh, it has to be remembered that there's a large number of car spaces that are on um, land owned by VicTrack that are, um, have a relationship with the market, so they're largely used by the market but are actually not under the control of the market. So particularly on the um, eastern side of the railway station at the moment, there is a strip of land that's currently designated for car parking. It is not just for commuters, it's used by anyone. Um, and so retaining that during construction uh, um, and then into the long term um, may or may not be achievable. Certainly it's appropriate to advocate for that or replacement in other locations, but um, uh, the reality is that that isn't market car parking now. Okay, with those points of clarification, um, does the mover of the motion accept? I have a, can I have a question? Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, I, my question is, um, does the current wording preclude the, I guess, reality of what of the shifting nature. Okay, in that case, I'm happy to accept it. Okay, Councillor McCarthy. So I... oh, Councillor Messina has a question. I have a question. Um, I'm perplexed about the maintenance. Sorry, can I just interrupt? Can we get to our feet when we're yeah, speaking? Yeah, just, <laughs> sorry. My question Thank in you, relation Councilor to Masseen. maintains existing car parking, do you mean numbers or do you mean physical site? Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, you're not able, well, I think that... Because you can read that as maintains existing car park currently as in numbers or the physical... Sorry, area. can I just do a point of order? We're getting into the debate of an amendment. We need to see if the mover and seconder accepts it and if they don't, then okay. we can debate it. I've accepted it. Okay, the mover has accepted it. Does the seconder accept it? I'm, I'm actually not clear on what it means, um, so I, I think it needs to be reworded. Maybe well, I think that's a refusal. That's a you don't accept it. So we will go to debate on this amendment. Um, if I may, Mayor, can I ask through before we debate it that we get some clarity because I'm not sure what we're debating, what the point is anymore. Okay. 
I've got several people on their feet. Can I ask people to sit down? Um, Councillor Lawrence. Before I second the amendment, which seems to be refused. Okay. I'm going to ask if there is a seconder. The, this amendment has not been accepted by the mover and the seconder. I therefore ask if there's a seconder. Madam Mayor, I'm seconded, but I have a point of order regarding the code of conduct in this chamber right now. Okay, what's your point of order and what does it relate to, Councillor Lawrence? Uh, Madam Mayor, I would seek a withdrawal. It's of the Mayor Rennie, thank you. Rennie, I would seek a withdrawal of the inference, the defamatory inference, inference, inference that I have flip flopped on this decision in relation to the August 2017 okay. meeting. C Councillor Lawrence, um, what on point the of order? Of being factually incorrect. And okay, I'm looking me. at I'm looking at the governance code of conduct, and I'm specifically asking um, what point of order it is in relation to which part of that. The point of order is there was a reference made by a councillor in this chamber that I had flip flopped on a decision regarding the Preston market, which is this item, and I don't want to proceed. That's why I was trying to raise it now, which was factually incorrect. I was not present at the meeting. Okay. I believe that the point made was that council had flip-flopped. If you were not present in the meeting, Councillor Lawrence, then I don't see how that could be inferred when you weren't there. So I don't accept the point of order, but your point is taken and you have noted that you were not there. I'll make a point of order in your comment, Madam Mayor, the statement has been recorded and will be trans, um, um, transmitted to the government and clearly said that the, every councillor in a unanimous decision of the council and every councillor here, I was not present at that meeting, there was not nine all councillors and that was the statement was made. Um, thank you for clarifying that the words unanimous were problematic and I will accept that. Um, and I would ask um, Councillor Amir if you would just withdraw the comment. Uh, yes, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to withdraw the comment if I've stated nine councillors that I agree that was an incorrect statement. Um, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Rennie. <laughs> So I have a seconder for second this amendment. Thank you. That was Councillor Lawrence. So Councillor Gweco. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, um, uh, I, I've made this change because I think it's a very important change in the wording. And, and this goes back to the point about why I thought that we needed to um, uh, defer this in order to correct some of the looseness in this motion. Um, so what I'm suggesting there in the amendment that we maintain the existing car parking, one of the things, as we all are aware, whoever's been in contact with the traders of the Traders Association, the key issue for the market has been for the traders if when development occurs around the market is maintaining car parking. That is the lifeblood of Preston Market. And, um, and if we're wishy-washy, on words of like maximising, and we know what um, um, the, the slippery slide of where words can take us in regards to um, uh, parking, is that if we're not clear about that we want to maintain the existing um, <coughs> parking that's currently being used by the uh, traders and, and the customers, that um, trading will be adversely affected. And I don't want this council to be responsible for that. And because one of the things that comes to us from our traders is to ensure that we safeguard the, the parking. They're already not happy with, with the parking arrangements at the market. And I know that, you know, obviously we know that the market is private property and, and, that, and it's an issue that they have with the, with the developers, with developers there. But us making statements like this or statements where 
where the language is very um, generic, enables to provide a loophole or provide space for then car parking to be um, not properly addressed during the, the construction stage. Many of the traders um, are, uh, are required to um, sign leasing arrangements that don't have clauses about that if, the, if there's an economic um, effect of the development on their trading, that then they would be compensated through their lease. Many traders don't have that. So if, if parking is going to impinge on who goes to the market, then traders will be left with these contracts, leasing arrangements, and no, no clients to actually help them to service um, their, their leases and their bills. So it's important that we actually safeguard the parking in and around the market because that is a, a fundamental cry of our traders. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. Uh, yes, Mayor Rennie. Um, look, this point about the council going into a consultative process where we uh, don't have power is very important that we actually up front argue for our community. Now, this is not, this country is not New Zealand. In New Zealand, traders set their rents based on turnover. So if this, if we're in New Zealand with this market situation, if the loss of car parking removed the, the turnover of the market, the tenants would be able to seek less payment in rent because it's based on turnover. We have a very exploitative system of leasing in Australia. And if this car parking is negotiated away with weasel words and softness at the very outset, these more traders will go under. I'm very sad to see a couple of stalls just last week have gone that have been there for 20 or 30 years because people uh, have been impacted already about their futures. These are family businesses. The owner is not going to cut them any slack. And in that regard, we need to stand firm on car parking. Thank you. Are there further questions, or sorry, further speakers on the amendment? Councillor Messina. Uh, through you, Mayor Rennie, I have a question. Again, it confuses me, item number C. It says maintains existing car parking. And there's no clarity in terms of there is a there is a press remark. Are you does, debating I'm, or are you asking a question? I'm asking the question. Okay. The question is based on there is first of all there is a property that is owned by Preston Market Development on the corner of St George's Road and Kramer Street. Now I understand that's going to be also be developed. So it, it, it contradicts what's actually there. So and the question also is is. It's, I'm still not clear. Does he mean numbers or does he mean space? Because you can actually read that two ways. Thank you for that question. Um, I'm not sure who the question is directed to. Well, I, I may be able to assist, Mayor, with an, an amendment to the amendment. Um, you can't make an amendment to an amendment. I think we need to resolve this. Um, perhaps if you spoke to the amendment, I'll, that I'll would assist. I'll speak to the amendment and foreshadow a, um, an alternative um, uh, because what seems to be where we're getting confused here, I don't hear any disagreement here in relation to what we're talking about, which is that we believe there should be a sufficient number. Can we just get the clock on? Sorry? Keep going, Councillor. So um, my concern with the wording as expressed there um, is that it says maintain existing. Councillor Messina rightly pointed out, and it raised the same concern for me, are we talking about looking after the car parks? That's what maintenance it can be referred to. We don't want to be misinterpreted. Or are we talking about maintaining the, su the supply of car parking? The existing supply, and so the wording, as, it, as I think it should be listed, is actually maintains existing supply of car parking currently. Because otherwise, what we're saying is actually that the exact car parks that are there at the moment cannot be um, have things on top of them. Um, when in fact, what we should be saying is we realise that in a construction process, things are going to be put on some of those car parks. But if you're going to put stuff on car parks, you need to create. Um, a, an equivalent amount of car parking nearby in the same vicinity. That's actually what happens with these level crossing and removal projects. It's what happens with construction projects when we put those requirements in. So a simple bit of wording change is all that I think is required, which would be in fact to say maintains um, existing supply of car parking. 
The simple word supply of is what's required. That's not in there at the moment. Therefore, that's why I couldn't support the amendment, but I would foreshadow um, an alternative set of words um, if this doesn't succeed, which would be maintains existing supply of car parking. Um, thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there further speakers? Okay, there being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour of the amendment? One, two, three. Uh, that amendment is carried. So that becomes the motion. Um, that brings us back to the motion. Um, Councillor McCarthy? Well, can, I foreshadow, can I pass the, um, the propose the uh, amendments to the motion as listed? Sorry. Can I just check? I believe Councillor McCarthy was actually the mover of the oh, yeah. amendment the, of the motion itself. So, Councillor McCarthy, Look, I'm happy sorry, to move as an the amendment, seconder. But I, I'd like to use slightly different words so that it is aligned to the um, guiding principles that we've um, put forward for the market. And that the, the language that's used there is that there is no net loss of car parking. Um, so. Councillor Lesser, so are you suggesting an amendment? I, I, yes, I'm, I'm taking off where Councillor McCarthy couldn't go because he is the seconder. Um, and, but I guess my question is, it would be amending the amended bit. Does that matter? Can I seek clarification? I'll just seek clarification on that. Understanding is if that it's not directly opposite to the intent, then it should be fine. Yes, Councillor Lesurf, you may propose an amendment that actually, um, as long as it's not opposite. Yes. So that the amendment would be, uh, and especially. Um, that no net loss of car parking. There is. There is. Oh, there is, sorry. That there is no net loss of car parking. George, that there is no net... Okay. No, it doesn't need to be second, because the first question I have is, is that acceptable to the mover? And the seconder, mm -hmm. yes. That is acceptable. So that is um, now the motion. Um, thank you. So are there any other speakers to the motion? Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Rennie. I'm very happy with that. Um, um, I think that that's a great improvement from the weasel words like maximises, right, which is our government keeps telling us. The maximising harmony, maximising this, maximising that. We know it's a weasel word. Rightly, uh, what we want to seek is a position where car parking is maintained and trade is not affected. Um, and the wording, no net loss, uh, to me means the same thing. Um, if there's negotiations around that, and I'm sure there will be with the authorities, we need to try and seek the best outcome possible but we don't need to concede that negotiation position at this point, and it does reflect the actual guiding principles that the council's already passed. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there further speakers? Councillor Greco. Um, thank you, Mayor. Look, it's, it's unfortunate, but I will be speaking against this motion. And I want to direct um, Councillor's attention to page, uh, page four, where it says that the, um, that the VPA um, uh, you know, developed, submitted the, the, the planning controls um, to, to the minister, and then the minister um, subsequently endorsed five guiding principles. Those guiding principles, the first guiding principle is a thriving fresh food market, not the Preston market. So the, the guiding principles are not referring to saving the Preston market. That's why... That's why um, 
when it was said that um, it's right, Councillor uh, Amir is correct, that I did ask for the minister to call it in. But I asked for the minister to call it in to save the market. Now, the minister has let us down. The VPA has let us down because the VPA and the minister are not saving the market. The minister and the VPA have endorsed principles about a thriving market that could be on any corner or any angle of that site. And, and therefore, that's why I had the amendment to say that we need to bring this back in-house for the council to reconsider and to council to work on the planning controls associated with that site so that then we can put those planning controls back to the minister and that then the minister can then um, reconsider and hopefully what we would put back to the minister is to save the market. So, councillors, we've got to look at the fine print, and I'll finish on this, is that the minister is not saving the market. The VPA has not saved the market. And that we are being led down a slippery slope, I'm and I'll finish on this, thank we you, have been led down a slippery slope by the VPA um, in regards time, to this. time, Councillor Quicker. Thank you. Are there any further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour and against? That motion is carried. Um, that brings us to item 8.6 on the agenda, the contract for the award of open space. Uh, Councillor McCarthy. Happy to move that, Mayor, but I'll need to insert names into the motion. So I'd ask you to bear with me and, and councillors to bear with me as I read them out as required. So um, in the blank section of the report, uh, to insert the names, Active Tree Services, AMGRO, Arbor Survey, Aussie Drain, Burston's Plumbing, Central Tech Systems, Conservation Collective, Green Earth, Ecodynamics, Environmental Tree Techniques, Enviro Techniques, Globe Growing Solutions, uh, GMHS, RNN Grey, Green Water Australia, uh, Green Turf Management, Habitat Land Management, Land Links Environmental Services, Melbourne Chain Wire Fencing, Mary Creek Management Committee, Michelin Soils, Nature Links Landscape Management, Oasis Turf, Programmed Property Services, Revegetation Works, uh, Rod Gen and then in brackets, um, City and Rural um, uh, Trees in close brackets, um, Roof Controllers, Sayron, Squeaks, Garden, and then brackets Ray Malloy, Statewide Turf Services, uh, Taburan Irrigation, The Fencing Man, The Tree Co Company, TreeServe, UDLM Group, and Victoria Greenworks for the contract sum uh, of 27,000, uh, sorry, sorry, 27 million, I should say, 837,116 GST inclusive. Uh, for the period April 2019 to April 2024, including a contract period of three years fixed with two one-year options, a five-year period. Sorry, Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Clarify, that's not what's up there. The dates are different. Um, thank you, Councillor Lesseur, for your attention to detail. Um, Councillor McCarthy, can I clarify the date that you said? Uh, these are the dates as listed as per the tender, yep. so the, um, April 2019 to April 2024, with a, including a contract period of three years fixed, with two one-year options, and in brackets, a five-year period. Thank you. I think we've got that right now. I'm happy to second, but I just wanted to clarify with the officers that that was the intent. Um, Mr Albacini. Uh, for you, Mayor Rennie, yeah, that was the intent. Um, thank you, and thank you for your attention to detail, Councillor Lesseur. Um, Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I think that one holds the record for the most number of um, successful tenderers through a process. Um, I would note that um, there are a number of businesses listed there and organisations, including Mary Creek Management Committee, which I would note is, uh, is a, a partner of councils on a range of things, um, who have been identified through a process to be the successful um, contractees or tenderers um, for the delivery of open space-related services. Um, as the the report outlines 
Um, Darabin has obviously a diverse open space network, a lot of requirements that are um, included in our remit and a range of um, open spaces from our parks, sporting mm -hmm. reserves, linear parks, historic parks and conservation areas and urban spaces, um, as well as our, stri our st streetscapes that require services that are often highly specialised. In some cases those services are about um, the protection and retention of heritage trees. In other cases, they are about mowing lawns. In other cases, they are about looking after creek banks um, or remnant vegetation. So those range of skills that are required, those range of works, um, is much more than what we can provide in-house. Um, and therefore, as has been the practice through Council in relation to these sorts of works, um, we work with a range of organisations who are specialised, who often have specialised equipment and specialised skills to undertake those works. We have a, an impressive and, and quite significant open space legacy in this city um, of parks and gardens and remnant bushland, which we need to take care of, um, along with um, obviously our traditional sporting grounds and other sites. Um, so we need to invest significantly in, in that network of open space, as we do, and as is outlined in our open space strategy, we have a certain level of maintenance and requirement and revegetation that we are undertaking into the future. So the process that's uh, been undertaken here um, obviously is to engage successful tenderers or appropriate tenderers um, who will meet council's requirements in relation to environmental sustainable, environmentally sustainable process um, and also significantly, and this is um, part of the contract waiting, um, local supply, um, local labour obviously, um, and local workers involved. So that has been part of the consideration in terms of who gets the gig um, and how the work is done. And just like any tendering process, the Council's procurement plan, our procurement policy um, has been the driving uh, force in terms of how we've considered or how officers have considered these, uh, these contract applications. Um, but it is a point in time right now where Council needs to make the decision as is required under the Act to award the successful tenderers. So I support the process that's been undertaken and, um, and should this be successful, congratulate the successful tenderers um, who will be undertaking that work over the next five years. Um, the sum that is listed of 27 million um, is significant. That is not a single year, that is spread across that period, um, but that is the sum total of expenditure that we make uh, or can, can expect it, be expected to make over that period. So on that basis, happy to support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor LeSurf, I think. Uh, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, Mayor Rennie, I've got a question um, regarding an element of the program. Uh, yes. I'd need some guidance from the CEO if I can actually discuss it because it's contained in this confidential report. Um, I suggest that Councillor Lesurf speaks, and while she does that, perhaps you could pass your question to the CEO who determined whether it's appropriate. I actually didn't have anything to add because Councillor McCarthy's comments were quite comprehensive, and I support the motion. <laughs> okay, we'll just take thirty seconds so that we can be sure that Councillor Lawrence's question can be asked if it's appropriate in public. Um, thank you, Councillor Lawrence, for checking first, but I gather that you can ask that question. A question. I will try to frame it. Um, it's a great pity um, confidentiality has engulfed local government. Uh, Councillor Lawrence, I think that's uncalled for. In the past, these, comment, these type of reports were actually held entirely in a confidential setting and it's been brought into the public gallery. Um, and yes. so we're actually being more transparent than ever and, in the past. I can ask half my question. I can't ask the other half. And that 
that is a problem for me. Um, my question is in regards to this five-year contract is my understanding from the adjusted budget, which is a public document, is that the urban forest imp strategy implementation uh, was $450,000. And my question is, will that $450,000 be maintained throughout this five-year contract? Um, thank you for that question. I'll ask Ms Wilkinson to respond. Um, through you, Mayor Reddy, the $450,000 that was allocated or is shown uh, in the adjusted budget for 1819 was actually adjusted at the mid-year. So the original budget number was 250000 in the budget that was struck um, for the 1819 budget. Um, and then at mid-year, uh, $200,000 that was surplus to budget requirements was allocated to that program. So the program grew on a one-off basis. Um, in terms of an ongoing program commitment, that will be subject to council budget processes on a year-to-year -year basis. Thank you, Ms Wilkinson. Are there further speakers? Councillor Greco. Uh, um, thank you, Mayor. Look, I just have two questions just to go to the, um, to, to the report. One is I wanted to get an understanding. It's a question I often ask in tendering, particularly given this is it's $27 million, is that of the... Um, successful tenderers that we have and we are proposing to include as part of the panel, how many of them are existing panel members and how many of them are new panel members? Um, thank you. I'll seek some... For you, Mayor Rennie. I might ask Phil who will have the details associated with that. Mr Telk. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's around about 80 per cent existing uh, contractors. Uh, we have uh, some, some of the ones that we used before have, have gone out of business uh, and we thought it was a good opportunity to get some, some new, new blood into the system. Uh, thank you for that answer. Councillor okay, Gregor? Yeah, thank you for that. And the, the next question is, um, some time ago we passed a resolution in Council where we said that um, in relation to procurement that 10% of the procurement um, we were insisting our tenderers that they would employ young people. When I read this report, I, I tried to read it um, quite thoroughly, I, I didn't see very much reference to that. And, um, and I just want to get some assurance or some understanding of where the KPIs are or how would we, how would we be monitoring that 10% requirement um, in regards to young people. And I say that particularly in relation to this type of work which lends itself to young people actually entering into the workforce. Um, thank you for that question, Councillor Greco. Um, I'll seek an answer for from... you, Mary. Um, that detail, I think, Phil. Thanks. The um, criteria was for, as part of the social procurement, was employment of uh, people from disadvantaged groups or apprentices. Um, of these companies, I'd say about a third of them do employ, uh, do have employment programs for youth. Uh, but it's one of those things that we, we, we try to get as many in on it, but it's the waiting, it is about 10% of the waiting for, for that, 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 the assessment. So uh, the ones that are on there, they are encouraged, but there are no, no set KPIs for it. It's really asking, what do you do now? And what is your intention for the future? And, and that's how we've assessed it. Thank you. Just a supplementary question in regards to that. See, uh, I refer to the um, to the uh, evaluation, which is a public document. So even though it's in the confidential, it's a public document. I know that there is social procurement considerations there, and we give weighting of five percent. But I, I suppose the essence of my question is: is that how do we? Given that we've got a, a resolution, which was a very good resolution, and we all supported it, and um, how do we make sure that 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 ten percent actually gets guaranteed in in the process? Because and if I if I can further say, is that um, you know I suppose from a probity perspective, how do we ensure that? 
Thank you for that follow-up question, Councillor Greco. I'm going to ask Ms Bishop to respond. Thank you, Mayor Rennie. Thank you for the question, Councillor Gaetano. It's an excellent question. What we're doing is uh, reinforcing those KPIs through the review of the sustainability and social procurement policy, which will be coming through to Council in the next couple of months. And we're putting together a, um, an evaluation process, and it's actually a metrics that is absolutely going to measure that. Um, thank you. Are there any further speakers to this motion? There being none, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour and against? That motion is carried. That brings us to the motion 8.7 on the agenda. Um, our, uh, Councillor Messina. Now, I note that um, the motion before us is um, amended from that which initially appeared in the agenda um, and seconded by Councillor McCarthy. So it's a different motion to that which appears in the agenda. I've got some extra copies of it. I do have a few extra copies, but I think we'll also... So it's not um, not what's on the screen. Yep. Yep, so councillors should have a copy in front of them, but I do have some other copies here, and it will come up on the screen. Um, and I'll ask, while we're just... Um, making sure everybody has copies, um, ask the CEO to speak to this, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor Rennie. Um, councillors, as you, as indicated at the beginning of the evening, um, uh, I, um, Council has approved urgent business that relates to um, part of this uh, motion and this report. This is the remainder of the item. So, um, uh, so what I've proposed and put in front of you is an alternate officer recommendation. It should be in two parts. Um, one relates to specifically the Alga National Assembly and the other relates to the MAV State Council meeting. So hopefully that'll come up on the screen. Um, in the meantime, Councillor Messina, I believe you have it in front of you, so we'll invite you um, as the mover to Thank speak you. to this. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Um, I'd like to speak about the motions which I have tabled and item number um, number one, eight, uh, 8.7, item number one, H, H and uh, item number two, E. Firstly, I'm an aged care professional with over 10 years experience in the industry and I have survived a myriad of aged care reforms. I would also table that I have declared conflict of interest at briefings in chamber. However, I will not be required to register a conflict for this motion. This motion is about a um, provider by, uh, that holds a currently a monopoly, formerly not known as a Royal District Nursing Service and now owned, <coughs> named as Bolton Clark. The, this motion is asking the federal government to introduce a nursing subsidy to offset the high nursing costs for consumers on a home care package. The federal government assigns subsidies based on complexity of care needs. Each consumer is, is assessed as level <coughs> one, two, three or four. Level three and four is a consumer with high complex care needs. Subsidy is consumer directed. A consumer is a monetary value, so I will talk about money. A consumer who is on a pension on a level four is assigned $964 per week for services. The costs of nursing when required are $90 per hour. For the purpose of this example, take a consumer requiring nursing medication management half an hour per day. That expenditure is $315 per week. Subtracting administration costs, the management costs of $337, the consumer is only left with $312 per week to justify or for issues such as double incontinence, unable to venture out into the community, a consumer who assists with personal hygiene, there is no food preparation, no domestic care or any, or any socialisation. Therefore, on an ongoing basis, the consumer is left with insufficient funds. Therefore, I table at ALBA and the MAV that the federal government the motion to review nursing costs and introduce a nursing subsidy as tabled. Item number 8.7I and number 2G, uh, which refers to waste recycling. recycling. With every crisis, there is an opportunity. Australian recycling industry is still in crisis. Australia needs to, to view waste as a resource. We have used waste as an item to be reject and we discard. In the past, Council was responsible for waste from the bin to the tip to landfill. We are now required to go back to the beginning of the item, change the prehistoric linear approach to waste and think circular. circular. 
What we need is political will. What, what are the entrepreneurial opportunities, economic growth and product and process innovations? Our population is exploding in Melbourne by 2041. Waste volumes are projected to grow to 63%, approximately 6.5 million tonnes of waste. Will need to be managed each year based on these projections. Melbourne will need 1 million tonnes of new landfill capacity Ten seconds. per year. We have four landfill sites in Victoria. One is due to close. I recognise that what we need is to, cr to create an intergovernmental task force to support and recognise that waste is an essential service in recognition that this crisis requires a multi-level government approach. Thank you, Councillor Messina. Um, and the seconder was just... You at the seconder? Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Thank you, Mayor. Did you have a um, question? Sorry, just Councillor um, Lawrence. I have an amendment on two, on one G, two B, two C. I'll let Councillor McCarthy speak, I think, and then we'll move to the amendments. Okay, Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not going to try to do justice to all these motions. Um, I support them all, and uh, and I would thank both councillors and officers for all their work in putting them together. Um, we are putting forward a, an impressive agenda um, of advocacy to both the MAV and the Australian Local Governments Association, and I'm pleased to be um, Council's Rep for the MAV um, and look forward to helping debate um, these at both forums. Um, I'm going to speak specifically to the climate emergency uh, motion and also um, the inclusionary zoning item if I get a chance uh, or have time to, um, and we'll just highlight that the issue that we have picked up in this chamber that we have led on that has now been picked up by over 365 local governments around the world um, remains a, a, an issue for, uh, for many local governments around the country but in very different ways. And so what we've advocated for is not only for the federal government to declare a climate emergency uh, and to undertake the structural changes that are required um, to support that safety and security um, for our future. Um, but also to establish a $10 billion national fund for councils to build the resilience of climate change vulnerable communities. $10 billion seems like a large amount of money, but it is equivalent to the sort of investment that the Gillard government uh, made in uh, initiatives like the Clean Energy Finance Corporation as part of um, the Clean Energy Future Package. So it is not um, beyond the scope of a federal government to make that sort of investment. In fact, it is going to be essential because we know that not just cities like Darabin that have huge... Um, tracks of, of hot spots, which become uh, very uncomfortable and very dangerous for people on, heat, um, on hot days and heat island effects, as we, as we describe it here, but also other cities that are um, experiencing significant impacts of drought, um, of, of, of flood and of a range of environmental factors that have been um, exacerbated by climate change um, and which require not just a local response but a coordinated local, state and federal response. But the investment is required in these sorts of initiatives and it's not what local, local government can do on its own. So just like things like the Federal Black Spot Program and other initiatives that work between local, federal and uh, state and local, here is an opportunity for ALGA to advocate strongly to the federal government to go down this path. I would also um, voice my strong support, uh, along with all the other motions, but particularly for the, uh, um, the inclusion of mandatory controls in planning schemes um, across the country. We know that um, the investment in public housing and social housing and other forms of housing for vulnerable people has been um, hopelessly deficient over Ten recent seconds. decades. And in fact, um, we are seeing those effects firsthand here in our city and throughout the northern suburbs. So we need national action on that front as well. That's time. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie. I have a, um, a couple of amendments that I forwarded through um, in relation to one, which now we've got this, I did mark them as relating to the written document, so they were relating to page 95, et cetera, um, but those motions, um, those amendments relate to on this new piece of paper we have, 1G, National Grey Spot Program Ro User Pricing, uh, 2B, Rate Capping, to see compulsory inclusionary zoning and planning. Um, thank you, Councillor Lawrence. We'll just make sure that we get those up.
Okay. So the mover was Councillor Messina and the second was Councillor McCarthy. Um, what I would suggest is that we not try and do these all three together, but that we deal first with the amendment on page 95. Um, Councillor Messina, in relation to the Grace Book program, is that um, amendment acceptable to you? I'd like... Oh, sorry. It's, it's yes or no, so... Oh, okay. You, I'm happy. Okay, so that's 95 Grace Spot Program. Councillor McCarthy. Can I just ask, I'm just trying to understand Councillor Lawrence's intent. Is that for those points to be included in the, in the notes? Yes, it's to add the following dot points. So it's in addition to, is that my understanding, Councillor Lawrence? Can you clarify? Um, yes, probably they would best insert as the second last dot point because your last dot point is kind of a closing. Okay, so yes, they would be in addition to, not instead of anything that's in. Hang so. on, just to clarify, Council McCarthy said notes, not motion. Are we talking about the notes or the motion? It's not clear. As I understand it, they would be submitted into the motion that goes to ALGA, not into... The rationale. The um, words that you were up on the screen initially. So it's a change to the appendix. Yep, so these dot points, just to show you, Councillor McCarthy, are added in here, into the motion. Not into the council motion. Not into the council motion, they're added into the appendix. Yes, no, I, I, thank you, I understand. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm seeking is to make sure that our motion is cogent and coherent in its final form, and so I'm just seeking to make sure that the wording is correct. So if I can just ask for officers to just um, ensure that we're using the right terms there. Um, and there's probably a little bit of... Because I'm, I'm unclear whether this actually fits. So if we can just... Okay, I might ask for clarification from the officer who um, wrote these motions as to whether they're comfortable... So I might specify Thanks. the request, if I may, Mayor, that the phrasing of those dot points is not the phrasing of the points as listed. Um. So, I um, mean, you're specifying. Um, so, Ms Moxham, can I ask you to clarify whether we are able to include those things that Councillor Lawrence has identified as additions into the motion and that the words missing of the motion could occur after if all of those things were included? To you, Mayor Benny, yes, that's correct. That could be included in the motion. Um, in particular, point one of the motion, fund an $800 million grey spot program that provides pedestrian infrastructure. Um, my understanding is that the items listed are pedestrian infrastructure, so it would be consistent with the first point. Okay, thank you. Um, is that acceptable to you, Councillor McCarthy? So just to be clear, um, if I may, um, would those points be listed as a, as, a, as a final dot point, um, or would they be listed last. under second last dot point? I think we could leave that to the office to do the wordsmithing. That's fine. Is that You're acceptable, Councillor yeah. Lawrence, as long as all of those things are included? Yeah. Um, yes, Madam Mayor, Great. I'm happy to talk to it if I need to. Okay, so um, I'm going to say that those that first amendment has been accepted, um, so that brings us to the second amendment suggested, which was... Um, rate cap exemptions tied to specific and means tested social justice projects. Um, is that acceptable to you, Councillor Messina? Um. And to you, Councillor McCarthy? Uh, I, I, I can accept it as long as it's just wordsmithed a bit. Okay, Councillor Messina? Yeah. But the intent yep. is correct. Okay, that's also accepted. Um, and the third amendment um, relates to compulsory inclusionary zoning, and it would be to add two points to need to detail public housing numbers and need to detail homeless and temporary housing measures. Councillor Messina, is that acceptable? Uh, acceptable. May, 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 somehow that's lost in the email. Um, I was actually had listed there an amendment to, so that we include public and social housing, not just affordable housing, in the Language. title of the motion. And I just had made some notes that, you know, we hadn't covered the segments of housing 
the, the actual um, blurb around this seems to focus on affordable housing, not enough mention Okay, Councillor Lawrence, um, are you able to provide the words that you would like to see um, so that the mover and seconder know exactly what they would be um, agreeing to? Um, well, I'll just look on the sent emails. Um, so I'd just move that it, it was referring to page 104, so that now is proponing to 2C, that in the heading that we add um, the words social and public housing after affordable. Okay. So we're covering all the three things. I won't go into the blurb. Okay. So the amendment that Councillor Lawrence is proposing is that the motion which currently has a heading compulsory inclusionary zoning and planning schemes for affordable housing would read compulsory inclusionary zoning and planning schemes for social, public, social and affordable housing. Yeah, just so we're covering affordable. Yes. The full mix. Mm. Yep. Um, is that acceptable? It's acceptable to Councillor McCarthy. Is that acceptable, Councillor McCarthy? Yes. Okay. So um, those amendments have been accepted and now form part of... The motion, noting that they're all changes to the appendix themselves rather than the words of the motion that were up before. So we've heard from um, Councillor Messina and Councillor McCarthy. Are there further speakers to this motion? Councillor Lyons. Um, yes, Mayor Rennie, I'd like to uh, speak in favour of the motion. Obviously, it covers a, a large amount of issues, and I commend the councillors and the officers who put work into this. Um, just in relation to National Grey Spot Program, um, which I actually started working on in January this year, and it struck me when you looked at the number of road deaths of pedestrians per year, it was almost equal to workplace deaths, and um, which is a large thing that the new, if we get a new government, will be moving on. And yet, when I look closer, um, a disproportionate amount of those pedestrian deaths are through older pedestrians. And my own experience obviously has been that um, we can't get through Vic Road's percentages and numbers to often get extra crossings on heavy roads. I'm talking about Banbury Road, I'm talking about Dune Street, I'm talking about Cheddar Road, I'm talking about all these secondary roads where we have high percentages of old Australians. And tragically already this year um, the amount of pedestrian deaths has gone up in Victoria. So just in two months. So um, so this is to try and, uh, um, I suppose, get a national funding federally to do a bit what we've done around schools over the years and, and decreased speeds, increased safety. Um, but I've also added today's those extra bits because just like bikes and cars require extra infrastructure, this is not just about crossings and footpaths. We actually need for older residents to provide water, um, adequate seating, as they, as they incorporate walking in walking groups and also walking to shops, because this is an active ageing uh, community Ten that we're seconds. Um, living in. Um, and just in regards to linking any request for in rate capping consideration, we should touch That's on time, social Councillor justice Lawrence. because of our own community's needs here. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Are there further speakers? Councillor Greco. Thank you, Mayor. Look, first of all, I'd like to thank the officers for putting all this work together. It's a huge task, but I think we have a really, really um, strong set of uh, motions that we'll be presenting to ALGA and to the, um, to the MAV. Look, I'll only focus on one um, item that, um, that is of particular concern and interest to me, and, and that doesn't mean that all the other motions that don't interest me, I think all the other motions are very good motions. Um, the one that I want to focus on is the, um, the motion about ALGA establishing a national advisory body um, um, on population, migration, interculturalism and, di and diversity. The name may be a bit clumsy, but it's just to capture the various concepts um, behind it. Why I think this is important is that um, ALGA being a national body of um, local government, um, does not seem to have a sufficient enough focus 
uh, or a conversation around um, issues that have got to do with population, issues that have got to do with migration, issues that have got to do with um, 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 interculturalism, and issues that have got to do with um, social cohesion. And we know that in um, across the country, and I think I believe there's six or seven hundred local governments, and we know that the many of the rural and regional local governments, there is a massive skill shortage. That skill shortage, if you link it back, it's linked to um, issues of um, the, if you like, the brain drain that occurs away from um, um, rural and, and regional communities. And that's where a, a conversation around population, a, a conversation around um, 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 making um, rural and regional areas much more welcoming to um, um, to um, uh, a diverse population become important. Take and I think that um, ALGA could play a very critical role. And then the last note that I say is in relation to interculturalism and social cohesion, uh, I just have to sort of um, um, refer to uh, what recently happened in Christchurch. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there any further speakers? No. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. Um, thank you. That brings us to the end of um, consideration of reports, consideration of responses to petitions, notices of motion and general business. There are none. So that brings us to item 10 on the agenda, notices of motion. 10.1, uh, Darabin Community Sustainable Transport Reserve. If there's no mover, that motion will lapse. Uh, thank you. Is there a seconder? Uh, I, I'm happy to second it, but I have a slight amendment that I'd like to put, an additional you point. You can't second and put an amendment. Well, I'll just... Um, uh, well, I'll just second the motion then. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, just on this uh, motion at the moment, this... Um, Required some timely action. Obviously, obviously, Mayor Rennie, we are um, fast approaching an election um, period, as um, all this activity seems to show. And in the previous uh, federal election, uh, we got a commitment from the opposition, the Labor candidate uh, for Bat, well, it was then Batman, now Cooper, of forty-four million dollars. Um, if elected, uh, to invest in the Gilbert Road tram, which is a huge amount for a federal government to invest in a tram network, and one um, welcome uh, promise. Now, that had been built on from a previous promise by both candidates uh, of the previous election um, in the federal of $22 million for that extension of that tram. And this motion seeks to add weight to that lobbying power and uh, I probably should have noted these current... Uh, we should, probably should be lobbying uh, any federal candidates again to try and match that $44 million because I don't know where that is at. I don't know if you've been involved in lobbying on that. And what happens, obviously, when there's a large investment in a tram network, as we saw in uh, High Street Northcote and Thornbury with the smart stops is there's a lot of allied work that actually gets placed onto council in terms of road beautification, road modifications, etc., where it falls into our domain. So what I'm suggesting here is a commitment to create a reserve that will actually act as a lobbying tool, and it will be money, if we're ever successful in getting the tram extended, we will be look, looking at considerably more than this. But at this point in time, we need to lock in the federal promises of the federal candidates for this project and obviously show that we are committed and we would be committing with dollars. And that would require um, allocating a reserve for it in anticipation of a, a change of government in May. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco. Um, thank you, Mayor. Look, I, I'm glad that this motion has come forward. Um, uh, look, I think it's an important motion because... Um, and I think it's consistent with council policy. We have a, currently a, a reservoir structure plan, which clearly one of the central features of that reservoir structure plan, apart from the, um, 
the um, removing the rail crossing, something that we have achieved, is also the extension of the tram all the way to the um, reservoir station. So I think that in light of the um, in light of the federal election, in light of what our local member has already committed to, um, not only in the last election but the previous local member in the previous election, there was a commitment to actually the federal government assisting or funding, I think up to $44 million, the extension of the tram. But I think in order to show our good faith and our hand in this, by us putting forward dollars in regards to a, um, um, a reserve actually shows that the council wants to move on this and also um, demonstrates to our community that we want to take advantage of the changing tide in relation to these major infrastructure works. We, a few years ago, we thought that the reservoir um, rail crossing river was pie in the sky stuff. That is happening. And, um, and this could be happening too. But we need to take that, that, that first step. In relation to the rail crossings, we actually invested heavily in regards to in, uh, putting forward um, proposals, in regards to developing feasibility studies in order to present to the government how uh, rail crossings would work, particularly along the, um, around the Preston Bell and other stations there. And it seems that the government is almost there with us in, in endorsing that. So I think this will go a long way in achieving the, um, the long-awaited promise of the extension That's of the tram. Are there any further speakers? There being no further speakers, I'm going to speak in accordance with Clause 26.3 of the Governance Local Law. I think it's a great shame that councillors have chosen to use this meeting to debate budget items that rightly fit in a budget debate, noting that we will be debating the draft budget at our next council meeting. I think there's little point in debating the merits of a tram or not. We all know that a tram is a much desired and very worthwhile thing, as with many of the other things that have been listed tonight as notices of motion. And so while it's not contrary to the governance local law, the practice of putting notices of motion in that relate to the budget while the budget process is underway does not represent good governance and, in fact, is at odds with accepted norms and processes for the development of the budget. It is, I believe, poor practice and I'd ask all councillors to consider this in the future. Um, Councillor Lawrence, you have a right of reply. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, Mayor Rennie. Um, Mayor Rennie. Um, in relation to this, um, and I certainly would have appreciated some uh, feedback in relation to the wording, because at briefing people uh, expressed some support from this concept, but uh, were asking advice about the wording of it in regards to referrals to budgets. But that communication hasn't happened. Um, so I would still uh, um, say that we have... I am grateful, though, because I have raised this issue of a sustainable transport reserve before, and I've noticed in the two uh, 12, last 12 months that reserves have become a feature of our budget, and that's quite flattering. But I think that we need to actually focus back on extending the sustainability of transport. We have two tram networks in this city and two train networks. My ward is stunted in two ways of public transport. One in the western region because the tram that was promised to go to the Marylands estate has never arrived there. And number two in the other area on uh, Darabin Creek where people have to walk two kilometres to get to train stations. So I have been raising this repeatedly and I will continue to raise it. And I, um, contrary to your ruling, um, I, I do believe it is good governance to continue to represent people above Bell Street and I'll continue to do that. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour and against? That motion is lost. Um, that brings us to item 10.2 on the agenda. Councillor Lawrence, did you want to move that? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. This relates... Mayor Rennie. Uh, I'm happy... To, uh, I've already got a seconder over here. Councillor McCarthy has seconded that. So, Councillor Lawrence. Um, this relates to um, 
a question in a, a council meeting three weeks ago. I keep thinking we have meetings every two weeks, but it's three weeks, isn't it? Um, uh, where I was going to ask in relation to our front of our um, document whether we could have um, Woiwurrung language in the front and also when we had all this blank space, why we couldn't include some other very significant communities who have grown quite large, or some of them for a while, um, in the top 13 um, languages in the city. So this motion seeks to include those and obviously some of them will be familiar to councillors. Um, the Punjabi language has obviously been tracking pretty much alongside Hindi for a number of years <coughs> and is obviously characterised by a lot of people in reservoir. Um, less known is Nepali or Nepali and we have seen some shops and a lot of community move into Moorland and Whittlesea and obviously Darabin. Uh, Urdu is probably not familiar to some councillors, is um, uh, really um, a, a similar language to Hindi but in Pakistan, the language of Pakistan, written in, in a, a Persianised script. And again, that's a growing community. And finally, um, with some surprise myself, I saw in, in the 2016 um, stats that Spanish speakers are now around 1,000 and I've also noticed in the last six months a number of Spanish uh, speaking cafes opening, uh, Arepa and uh, Colombian food and other food is coming into the area. And I was just walking down the creek the other day. I had three groups speaking, speaking Spanish. Um, so that is another significant one. And the importance of this is it may seem like small communities. Um, the people here uh, range from 1,500 to 1,000 speakers. But I am reminded that, um, um, say, with the Latin uh, language there, uh, that, that, you know, the Labor Party is 800 members and the Greens Party is 200 members and the Spanish speakers with 1,000 members could uh, new, make a new party and dwarf us all. So, but I don't want to be flippant. That it is difficult to reach out to the whole 130-plus languages in this city but if we can extend this a bit to the top 13, I think we'll be making our decision-making more transparent. We'll be inviting people in to have conversations with us. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to start off by saying gracias to Councillor Lawrence for his initiative in relation to this. Um, I actually studied um, Spanish uh, in high school and was distraught when it was cut um, halfway through. Um, and share Councillor Lawrence's delight at the, um, the growth, not only in, in that language, but all the other languages that are listed here. And I think we need to recognise that um, the languages and the community languages that we may traditionally have thought were the dominant ones do change over time, just as our population changes. And we just have to uh, remind ourselves um, that uh, every few years when the ABS um, data comes out, um, the leader, leader paper often will say this is the new most common surname and it's often not the common surname that most people would think. So um, this is part of the process of both demographic change and linguistic change in this city. Um, I would note as well that um, a number of the speakers of these languages um, are also known to obviously speak English and in fact um, highly fluent in English and often um, more, 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 more correct and proper English than many of us native English speakers um, would use. But there is something about seeing the language and culture um, that you are from or that you connect to um, and seeing it in print and seeing it in council documents that reflects that cultural identity back to that community. And that is a really important thing. Um, it is actually one of the reasons why we do have a presence of community languages in our documents, not just the agenda, as Councillor Lawrence has pointed out, but also in Darabin Community News, in our annual reports and, uh, and the like. It also triggers something else, which I think is actually the, the thing that flows from this motion, which isn't captured in the motion, but I think is a natural consequence of that, which is that when we say we will speak to you in language X or language Y, we're also saying that if you call up council, we're going to make sure that we've got a speaker in that language that we can... Uh, Ten seconds. Service. And I think that's probably the next stage. That's a, that's a budgeted item, and that requires a bit more work, um, but it's something I'd be certainly supporting investigating as well. Thank you, Councillor McCarthy. Are there further speakers? Councillor Gwecko. Just very quickly, um, look, I, I commend this uh, motion and um, of extending the, the language um, groups that we um, present at the front of our agenda. I, I think that for me, the, the most significant 
um, aspect of this is the symbolic, uh, import, uh, symbolic importance of having those languages listed at the beginning of our agenda because what it shows is that we're actually speaking to all of our community and that we're embracing all of our community in relation to our work. Um, whether we actually get inquiries via um, th those two light notices um, is questionable, but but it's important in our official documentation that we show that we um, uh, we are making them accessible to everyone. So symbolically, symbolically, it's quite a significant move. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That motion is carried. It brings us to noted unanimous. Yes, we can note that that was unanimous. Thank you. Um, Ten point three. Is there a mover? Um, yes, I'll move that, Madam Mayor. Is there a seconder? Oh, I'm happy to second that. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Um, Councillor Lawrence. Um, Mayor Rennie, this uh, item relates to um, an area in the city. Um, seems to have dropped. Of the Dole and Donath Reserve area, which is a massive area with several reserves, a number of clubs, all sorts of uh, uh, states. Some of those, um, obviously, the Dole Stadium pretty much crumbling, but is subject to a new project there, and fairly barren. And the landscaping, you know, we had some urban forest planting there that has transformed one corner, but we have a master plan that's been developed by the staff in consultation with the residents for uh, a great deal of time. And this replaces another master plan that was drafted by a previous council and was not fully delivered on. So my concern is, and why I haven't moved the motion to refer it to the budget, because Donald and Dole have been referred through master plans and funded twice. And I'm concerned that again, in a fairly, um, Again, confidentiality, you know, doesn't permit me to share with the community what is in the proposed budget or coming up, but I'm concerned that we are going to deviate in the council away from the officer's recommendation on, on this and moved to a, a greatly reduced Donath and Dole reserve master plan, and we need to actually commit to it. We don't need to join the serial kind of betrayal of Dol and Donath that's occurred over 20 years. And um, it's fairly cruel to have a master plan and then just cut it in half or not to deliver on it as previously has happened. Um, so that's why this is here and that's why I haven't changed the wording um, when there's been some suggestion around uh, refer to budget. It's been referred and referred. It's had two master plans. We've got to commit at some point. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Look, I support this motion because uh, I think it's very important that we recognise the work that the, um, that the reference group um, is currently doing in regards, to the, um, the, in regards to the master plan for this particular area. There's a lot of enthusiasm in relation to the reference group, but one of the one of the limitations that they have or been faced with is in regards to the funding of um, of, of this master plan, and um, and the reference group would actually would like to see uh, uh, more advances in regards to um, us implementing the aspects of the master plan. As I said, there's a lot of enthusiasm by the group and, um, and that enthusiasm predominantly comes from the um, increased expectations that we have in regards to, to that particular area in Reservoir, expectations from our community um, and expectations from families as we see the area becoming um, um, increasingly um, um, becoming um, uh, uh, populated with the increased density of the area. The, the other important thing is why we need to actually put this extra money in regards to this particular project is that um, those areas there for far too long have had the, the look and feel of being paddocks. And we have to change that feel and look. And they still 
have that aspect of them and being these big open paddocks, and we need to accelerate the master plan in order to increase the tree canopy over the area, where we've also even noted that the tree canopy in the northern part of the city, and in particular pockets of the city, has, has dramatically decreased. And if you go out to that particular area, you see the barrenness of, of the area, and it's important that we Ten try seconds. to uh, improve the area from that perspective. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Are there any further speakers? There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? And against? That motion is lost. Uh, 10.4. Athletic track seating and shelter. Um, Councillor Lawrence, I trust you're moving the motion? I'll uh, move the motion. And is there a seconder? Yeah, I'm happy to second. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. This motion has Councillor no... Messina, do you have a question? Oh, Madam Mayor. Through you, Mayor Rennie. Mayor Rennie, I have a question. Um, this is a budget item, yet there is no um, budgetary money, uh, no money attached to the item. Um, thank you. I believe we have received... Is, is the question, how much would it cost? Um, yes, I believe we have received that information, but I'll just seek some clarification because um, I don't have it in front of me right at this moment. It was the cost of all of these was worse circulated, just for reference. Um, yes, Mr Albertini. Uh, for you, Mayor Rennie, um, um, the, the scope is obviously not clear, but we anticipate it could cost between $400,000 to $1 million, depending on what the scope of works are. Thank you. Sorry, could I just have that again? I didn't hear the first. Yeah. Um, could, could we have that answer again? Because it wasn't heard by all. Uh, for you, Mayor Rennie, the scope's not clear, but we anticipate, without understanding the full scope, it could cost between 300000 to a million dollars, depending on the scope. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Rennie. Mayor Rennie. Um, with this motion, um, uh, this is in response to uh, community demands in, in the area and expectations in the area. And I haven't put figures in there because I haven't sought to lock this meeting or into a specific figure. It says adequately construct seating and shelter for spectators. So obviously um, the detail of this motion would be subject to uh, budget um, considerations, but it is to, I suppose, make the council uh, um, uh, resolve that we want to have an outcome where we have the athletic tracks upgraded, but we also provide adequate seating and shelter. Um, and again, um, I'd have to be uh, in the budget process getting the advice on the officers on what that is, which could be sheds or could be... Um, there's a variety of different outputs, of, obviously, on that. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Greco. Um, um, Mayor, look, um, in relation...